Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the 2012 BB&T North Carolina High School Athletic Association Football Championships on Time Warner Cable Sports from Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the 2AA state championship between the Vikings from South Iredale High School and the Jaguars from Carborough High School. 15-0, undefeated season. Just five years ago, they started their varsity program and already in a state final, taking on the Vikings from South Iredale, the West Regional Champion at 13-2. Hi, everybody. Greg Mayer along with Joe Simmons. Happy Good to bring you all this action live here on Time Warner Cable Carter Sports. Finley. We've been here all day, Joe. We've seen a lot of great games. We're going to cap it off tonight with a nightcap of our triple header, a game between two teams making their first ever trip to a state championship. Yes, tonight, Greg, history is going to be made as you have two teams who are embracing the opportunity to play for a state championship for the first time. You've got Carborough, which is a relatively new school, who is uh, getting, in, getting in early and getting a chance to make a statement. And we've got a school like South Iredale, who has a rich history of athletics and uh, athletic talent, who is making their first appearance and from the West. And it's got to be exciting for both programs and both schools and the communities have to be excited about this. Uh, both teams very excited about being here. Let's see how they got here. First, for the West Regional Champion, South Iredale, they had wins over Pisca and Bandis, scoring over 45 points a game, and then a tough one against Salisbury to win by seven and advance to this cha uh, state championship game, their first. Meanwhile, for Carborough, the Jaguars, 15 and 0. They had wins over Randleman, and then a tough one against Reedsville, 20 to 16, and then they defeated a talented Northside Jacksonville team, 21 14, to advance to their first ever state championship. So the teams are here, and coming up we'll have a look at our keys to the game and then also have the kickoff of this two double-a state championship it's the nightcap championship saturday and it's all coming to you next right here on time warner cable sports we'll be back Whether you're on the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast to coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. Our young women and men participate in 23 sports in almost 400 high schools across 100 counties throughout the school year. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association provides the framework and oversees and governs the eligibility of all student athletes. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. I'm so excited to be here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and Z-Max Dragway. There is truly no place like this in the world and the excitement is everywhere. These are the most amazing racing facilities in America where over 200,000 of the finest fans come together to cheer on the best race car drivers in the world. You're absolutely going to flip when you see this amazing mecca of motorsports. So call 1-800-455-FANS for tickets and grab your cooler, grab your family and your friends and let's go racing. In sports, it's all about the numbers. The Ford Sports Night is on seven nights a week. Seven nights equals more than 200 minutes every single week. That's more than 1,200 hours yearly of non-stop sports with an award-winning sports cast and the only live nightly show about local sports in North Carolina. How you like them numbers? The Ford Sports Night, every night at 10 on News 14 Carolina, only on Time Warner Cable. And we welcome you back to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association State Championships. It's the 2AA State Final between Carborough and South Iredale. We talked with both coaches and leading things off, Scott Miller discussing overcoming losses and perseverance. We have the Everybody likes to lose, but you know you can take things positive from it. And we played well, our kids played well, and things have been going pretty well for us. You know, we had our up and downs like everybody else, but you know, perseverance is great in life. Carborough's spread offense has been lethal all season long thanks to the legs of Trey Sharp and the arm of Alex McVeigh. 
We asked him to do things in the running game and um, to do some things in the passing game as far as spreading the football around to people and extremely intelligent football players. He's a coach's kind of a player's coach in a sense that he understands what we're trying to get accomplished on Friday nights. And there are the fans on the South Iredell side, the Vikings in the uh, royal blue and white. Uh, and uh, on the other side in all blue and purple uh, will be Carbrell with a little gold in there. And Carbrell uh, will receive the kickoff. And uh, kicking off uh, from left to right will be South Iredell. First, the keys to this game for Carbrell. There's number 20. Trey Sharp and Joe, he is a key for Carbro. Over 2,000 yards rushing. We'll be looking forward to watching him run the football here tonight. Yeah, when you think Carbro football, you think Trey Sharp, and he's electric. He's dynamic. He's speed. He's power. He's a combination of a lot of things, and I haven't been fortunate to watch him a couple times this year. Every game I've seen, he's not disappointed. Spencer Kingsley, a senior, 6'2", 235, will kick it off here for South Iredale. Two teams into the state championship for their first time ever. And we are underway in this 2AA state final. Sharp going back to get it, but it's picked up there by uh, another man. And out to about the 29 and brought down there is uh, number nine. That's uh, Shamek Dolby. And the uh, cornerback, number nine, he's 5'9", 165, and a senior. So Carboro and Carboro, North Carolina, won the 2011 and 12 North Carolina Wells Fargo Cup for 2A schools, so they have an excellent overall program. And the football program, who just back five short years ago in 2007, lost games by 50 and 60 points, have now put things together under head coach Jason Tudrin, and they are undefeated at 15-0. and 0. And now some movement here on the offensive line as they shift. And the first down play. McVay will throw on play action. Got a man out there, and it is caught in stride. 20 Woo. down to the 15. Goes number six, Marlon Johnson, the junior receiver. 6'2", 205, over 1,200 yards receiving, and a few more. Yeah, Trey Sharp is the man that can stop on offense, but when you want a big play and you need to dial one up, you go deep to the big man, and Marlon Johnson shows you why. Here you have the play action, and the quarterback lets it go with all he's got, and Johnson never breaks stride and catches the ball, and if it were not for a shoestring tackle, we'd have six points on the board. Well, and you got to like the fight here in Carborough early, trying to send a statement with a long pass play like that. First down in 10 now at the South Iredell 15. And it will be a handoff. Is this sharp now from the 15 down to the 10? It will be sharp. Well, for Carborough, avoid turnovers. Obviously, that could be a key. We saw a few uh, play big parts in the earlier state championship games here held at uh, Carter Finley got to contain the running game of South Iredell and stay focused. Try not to get overwhelmed by the setting, the size of the stage. And it will be McVeigh, and he will run it in for the touchdown. And right away, Carborough strikes with an option play. You show it to Trey Sharp on the inside. Quarterback takes the corner, and that's one of the things that McVay does is, is really gets to the edge, and he threatens the defense well. He moves really well, really good quickness, and really fast speed in spurts, and he can be a dangerous weapon as well. Carborough opens up with a great offensive possession, and South Ardell right now has to be scratching their head, wondering what just hit him. Mike McPeak on to attempt the extra point. A member of the Carbro uh, men's soccer team that competed for a state championship just a few short weeks ago. I believe out of the hold of McVay, does a great job at getting that one back on the tee and, Mc, and uh, McPeak puts it through. Yeah, right away, Carbro makes a statement. Uh, with, the, with offensive possession, they come out and they throw the deep ball early to test the defense. They know that the offense is going, the defense has been saying we've got to stop sharp all week. And then they decide to go up top. Right here you see the touchdown play. McVay pulls it. He turns the corner. He has an opportunity. He could have even pitched it if he wanted to. But he takes the short route, runs the option, runs the option track, and gets in the end zone, scores the touchdown. Opening drive, 71 yards and just three plays. The big play, the pass to Marlon Johnson to get the uh, to set him up at the 15-yard line. First down and uh, 10 from there, and uh, they would take it in two plays later on the 10-yard touchdown run by Alex McVeigh, his fourth rushing touchdown on the year. 
and uh, not even one minute into this one, Garbro takes an early 7-0 lead. When you're a team for the first time into a state championship and you're Carbro, you get the ball first. You want to make a statement early on. You want to send a statement. You want to get out there and get your team out to an advantage by scoring first, having them settle down, and get excited about being in this football game. Now South Iredale probably hasn't played from behind too much. Down right now, 7-0. And that's something that they're going to have to uh, adjust to. You have two good teams, two good programs who are here for a reason, so expect an immediate response from, the, from South Iredale. This kick by McPeak taking it about the uh, 14, up across the 20 and the 25, and uh, brought down there is uh, number 14, Michael Fisher. So it's first down and 10, and there's Coach Jason Tudrin for uh, Carborough in his sixth year. Carborough, 18th overall. Spent a lot of time in Florida coaching with his dad and then coaching some D2 and D3 college football. He was a defensive back in college himself. His dad, an offensive coach, though, and this year uh, taking uh, in his sixth year at Carborough, sixth season, an undefeated season at 15 and 0. Here's the quarterback now for South Iredale. This is King, David King, number 12, 6'2", senior, 170. Here's a run up the middle. They've got a big man, too, that can run the football. This is Smith, number 21, LeChaston Smith, 6'2", 225, going to the University of Virginia. And he uh, has been injured for much of the season, has come on here late, 593 yards rushing, but he opens up with a big run there. Yeah, he's been a big part of what they do offensively, and there you see a little bit of power O play, a little bit of trap block, kick out block, and he hits the gap, and you see the big man can rumble. And a uh, good job of getting back. It's coming back with an answer as South Ardell is showing that they can move the ball. A little swing pass over here to uh, number uh, 17, Scott Miller. And uh, he gets maybe a couple yards. Looks like he gets down to about the uh, 45 of Carborough. So now Carborough sends a statement. Now South Ardell doing the same thing. And both of these teams have potent offenses, and both of them like to spread you out and run the ball. It'll be interesting to see which team is, has the ability to sustain it for the whole game. Smith again, and he gets down inside the 45 to about the 44-yard line, where it'll bring up a third down situation. And there's uh, Coach Scotty Miller in his third season as head coach, eighth overall for South Iredale. Both coaches with the beards have just kept on starting them in the before the season began. And there's a play almost intercepted. Pass incomplete. Number nine over there for Carborough. It's uh, Dolby again, the cornerback, coming over to make that play. So now it's fourth down. Nice job of breaking on the ball right there. And here you see they slowed South Ardell's progression by being aggressive on defense. And one of these teams is going to st start to pull away from the other. And you can see the speed components that both teams have on the outside. A lot of points scored by both teams because of all that speed. Sharp waiting at his 10 for this punt. It's a low kick that'll take a bounce and roll and roll inside the 10 and be downed at about the nine yard line. So it'll be a first down and 10 for Carbro inside their own 10 yard line. Leading seven nothing here in this two AA state championship. And already an exciting start as both teams here for the first time. Very exciting. And now Carborough lines up. Wide receivers are Roe Mellett, Marlon Johnson. And the, wide, uh, the uh, running backs are Douglas Parrish, number seven, and of course Trey Sharp, number 20. And it will be Sharp. And he gets out to about the nine, maybe the 10 yard line. So a short gain there on first down. Yeah, good job of South Ardell on defense right there. On the misdirection play, they were able to squeeze in the defensive end. Shows you his ability right here. As you can see from this replay, the, the misdirection play shows and the 51 squats comes down, the pressure off the edge, and there's nowhere for Sharp to go. So if he doesn't have a chance to get the corner and there aren't any gaps, he's not going to have a lot of success running the ball. Second down, McVay rolls out, now stops, throws down and field, and, and it's intercepted, picked off at the 26-yard line by Michael Fisher, his fifth of the year. Yeah, not sure where McVay was going with that when he had a receiver short who he overthrew and he had a receiver long who would that would have been an underthrow. And South Ardell shows you their speed on defense. And just like I just mentioned, they're able to get out there and make a play. And now they've got the short field. Here you see McVay throwing it and it's over the head of one guy 
and not quite long enough to the other. So I'm not sure where he was going with that. But a good job by South Iredell of picking up on it and getting the football back. And now here's King will throw on first down incomplete, trying to hit Fisher, streaking across the middle. So an incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. South Iredell. Led by their uh, Lechaston Smith, phenomenal player, Shrine Bowl selection. Broke his foot in the first game of the year. And uh, Coach Miller said didn't really didn't get back to us till late in the year. Was the defensive player of the year as a sophomore, and then he'll play as a linebacker uh, in the Shrine Bowl. And here he is on the first down run, 15-10-5. Touchdown, Smith, 26 yards. He made that look real easy right there as he turned the corner and went upfield. Nothing like anybody was anywhere near him. And that's running through the initial point of attack. And that's something Carborough's defense probably hadn't seen a lot of. People who have the ability to break tackles. And you can never sell this South Ardell team out as they have a legacy of talent and great players. Well, that interception, key here early on in this first quarter. Yes, yeah, sudden change is always a big thing when it comes to teams in games like this. And whoever handles it the best is usually the team that's going to win the game. Spencer Kingsley with the extra point. And that is good. With 9-11 to go, we haven't even played three minutes yet. And we've already <laughs> seen two scores in this game. Is that telling of what we'll see here for the remainder of the day? Hopefully I'll have enough voice left. <laughs> Look at this again. Just yeah, there you see the moves in space, and the big guy has really good hips. And he may be playing a little linebacker in the Shrine Bowl, but I think they might give him a few carries with moves like that. And <laughs> that tackle came up. Watch this stiff arm right here. He just kind of... Yeah, Shoves him aside, not much th no there. No thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no thank you. Not going to happen. And he takes it to the house. Well, UVA has uh, taken a couple of good backs out of the out of, uh, state of North Carolina. KP Parks from West Rowan, fantastic uh, rusher up there in the record books in the state for rushing. Saw him as a sophomore break uh, the uh, first play from scrimmage for a touchdown. We knew he'd be something special. He, uh, was getting like 3,000 yards a year, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Smith looks nice there. We'll be going to uh, play for Virginia in the future. So 7-7 our score here with plenty of action to go. Happy for the kid, but these North Carolina schools have got to find a way to keep that talent in state. High and short will be taken uh, about the 15. And short gets it out to about the 30-yard line, and we'll have it first down and 10 from there. Well, we want to remind everybody to like Carolina On Demand on Facebook and also to follow us on Twitter. From the Game of the Week announcements to behind-the-scenes photos and videos of our high school sports productions, Carolina On Demand has you covered. Maybe she's uh, tweeting, right? Yeah, we'll see. Checking we'll, out some we'll, we'll see if sports she's scores. Got anything something. going on right now with some with some stuff? Uh, we've been getting some good tweets today from some of our people out here watching. Keep them coming. First down and ten from the thirty, and this will be a handoff and a run there by number seven Douglas Parrish. And Parrish is brought down in the backfield. There will be a loss on the play. Yeah, they tried to come back with a jet sweep, and they, South Ardell does a really good job of holding contain. Here you see the jet sweep coming, and the quarterback reads it, and a lot of pressure on the outside, and that pressure upfield will knock that down every time. And I'm surprised you don't see more teams roll into a cover two look and getting that outside guy up on force so they can make a play on that. And you're going to start probably start seeing more and more of that from teams as they start to figure out the jet sweep. McVay. Now we'll dump off a little screen here to Sharp. Sharp at the 35, Sharp at the 40, and he's got a first down. And Defense. that's where he's the most dangerous right there. They got a, gave him an opportunity to get an open field. They set up the screen, a lot of pressure, and anticipating pressure up the field, and South Ardell came with the outside double ram blitz. He dropped it off to Sharp on the outside, and he's able to get a big play for you. At the 41, key point in the season for Carborough. Back in the 2007, the first varsity game ever against Cummings. Got beat pretty good. So this year, first playoff game against Cummings, and they went out and beat Cummings 68-31. to 31. And that's when Coach Jason Tudrin said, I knew our guys you know, had come full circle and really knew what it meant uh, to play and play hard. And uh, in the playoffs, they went on here to, to uh, win and, of course, remain undefeated get here to the state championship game. Yeah, interestingly enough, I went to that game with expectations to see 
use it as a measuring stick of how far the program had come. And honestly, it was never close. They really handed it to Cummings like it was nothing there. Here you see the quarterback on the, on the jet sweep read, sweep read. He pulls it and hits it up the field and gets positive yardage. He's going to have to do a really good job of reading that end on the jet sweep. And it's hard to read at that speed, but he's got to be able to do it. McVay again picked off, overshot his intended receiver. And it's number 14, Michael Fisher. Fisher at the 20, the 15, the 10. And he is inside the 10, and he has come up with his second interception. Yeah, McVay's not looking really good right now with some of these throws, and that's another overthrow right there. And South Idell's capitalizing. It's one of the things that hasn't happened this year is teams capitalizing on some of those bad throws. But right now, they're starting to capitalize, and it's, it's going to get ugly for Carborough if they don't clean it up really quick. Well, South Irondale down 7 nothing has used ter two turnovers now in this game. We'll see where they spot the ball. There's a flag on the play. And it is against South Irondale. Yeah, it looks like it might have been an illegal block on the return. So that'll be the second of the game for Fisher. That is his sixth of the season. He came in with four in the right place at the right five. time. First down. Couldn't really make out what he said on the mic that time, but it looked like he was calling an illegal block in the back. There's Coach Miller. His beard, he kept on growing it as long as the players shaved their heads and they kept him shaved the whole season. He said, I didn't think they would do it. They did. And so he said to keep his end of the bargain. And he's got a nice, nice full beard. I don't know if I could do that. I can't grow <laughs> mine out there. You see, I've already let mine go. And as soon as no, no shave November ended, mine went with it. Very passionate on the sidelines. Got to be excited about his team right now. This game a tied and a chance now to take it in again some more. This is at the uh, Carborough 35. Yeah, I know his wife can't wait for this season to get over it so she can see his face again. <laughs> First down and 10. From the 35. David King throws over the middle, caught. Caught at the 25 and down to about the 21 to Grayson McGee. Number 11, or excuse me, number 11, Jalen Stockton, a 5'10", 170-pound junior. Here you see the quarterback gets it. He takes a three-step drop, sets quick, so he's looking inside. He doesn't like what he sees, but he got a crossing route, and he's a little behind the receiver, which is probably a good thing because he doesn't lead him into the pressure that's coming with the safety on the upside, and it works out for their benefit on that play. I run up the middle, Smith, and he's got a short gain there, that offensive line. Anchored by Alex Gurley, a freshman, number 71, or 77. He is 6'1 and 250 pounds. Second down and nine. King throws it over here now to Stockton, number 11, and we've got an incomplete pass. The officials are coming in with a flag on the play. And encroachment. Yeah, looks like an offsides on Carborough. The rest of that offensive line for South Iredale. Chris Stone, number 52. Prior to the snap, we have encroachment against the defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Still suck it down. Reed Kennedy, the other guard, and the tackles are Justin DiCala and uh, Rob Gurley, number 78. So number 77, a freshman, anchoring the offensive line now for South Iredale. He is 6'1", 250. Smith, 15. Oh, hit hard, but he does able, is able to get up and get back to the 11. Boy, can't see who came in there and gave him the hit. Was it number 47? Louis Fi, uh, Funis, Luis Funis. He's a sophomore, six foot 240. Spencer Kingsley, number 44, also in there. He was the one that gave him the, the first hit. So a, a pickup. They have a couple. It's a third down in a yard. Right away, you see that South Ardell's going to attack with some downhill plays, but they like to go up top with it after that. Here's a run off that left side. This is uh, Ethan Cram, number 32. 
or right away too. You see that they like to go left in short yarded situations, and that's where their 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 big guys are. And that's that's not by mistake. That's by design. As they, they like to hit it up in there hard, and I suspect they're going to try to wear this Carboro front five down. King over here on this near side at the ten, and it is Stockton. He is knocked out of bounds near the five. Yeah, nice catch right there by Stockton as he was able to get up the field and make a nice grab. He's got to figure out a way to get his shoulder square so that he doesn't get pushed out of bounds so easily on that play. So some changes quickly here on the fly. No huddle for South Iredale, so the defense also trying to make some changes. King rolls out here to this uh, far side. It is caught. Fisher dives forward. No, he was out of bounds at the three-yard line. Yeah, his feet went out before he was able to reach out with the football. And fortunately for Carborough that that's the case because he extended well and had that ball over the pylon, but his feet cl clipped the out-of-bounds uh, strike before he was able to reach it over the goal line. There you see it on the sideline, and both our referees are in great position, so they're able to make the call. And the crowd here saw the replay on the big screen, the Jumbotron here, and uh, well, the next pass incomplete. So it's a fourth down, and they'll send down their field goal unit. Yeah, that time Stockton didn't hang on to the ball, and uh, it was disappointing as they had an opportunity to possibly score a touchdown. Spencer Kingsley in to attempt the 20-yard field goal. Spencer Kingsley attempts a 20-yard. To give South Iredell a three-point lead. High snap, put down, the kick is in the air, and it is good. Yeah, both teams have kickers that can get it done, and so a special team shouldn't be too much of an issue today, but you never know. It could be one of the things that changes the tide of the game. Well, I'll tell you one thing that will change the tide of a game, and that's turnovers. Carborough has thrown two interceptions, and that's led to 10 South Iredale points. Yeah, 10 early points that could have probably been negated where they give them the short field, and you can't afford to do that. There's the Viking marching Viking band from South Iredale here. It has just been a great day of state championship Saturday here at Carter Finley Stadium. And you're watching this game live on Time Warner Cable Sports, also on the web, news14.com. If you're home now, you know there's some relatives outside the viewing area that can uh, watch this game online on news14.com. Well, you can uh, give them a call and let them know about that. It's Trey Sharp getting ready to receive this kickoff for Carborough. 10-7, you know they've had the two turnovers, Carborough, but they're only down by three points. One score. So this game is, uh, is a good one, short one. It's gonna be fielded at about the 24, 30, 35, and out to about the 36, maybe the 37 yard. Yeah, they have a lot of big play potential on offense, so they've got three, three guys who are playmakers who can make the big play. And they just have to be patient, though. They stop trying to get the big play. The quarterback needs to settle down a little bit, find his accuracy, find his release point. Uh, when you're throwing the ball a little high, usually it's because you're not getting off your back foot. And that could be a variety of things from an ankle injury or anything like that. And we don't know that he's injured, but he's got to do a better job of releasing the football. McVay, a little shuttle pass over here to Sharp. Sharp at the 40. Sharp out to the 45, making something out of nothing, nothing there. Yeah, that's what he's done a lot this year has been able to turn small plays into big plays. And here you see him on a little quick pitch from the quarterback. He gets outside, and there's car, there's South Iredale defenders out there, and he's wiggling in and out of traffic, and then he refuses to go down. They, they threw him out of bounds right there at the first down. Watch this move right here, that little whoop right yeah, there. Yeah, that's, that's something, like I said, this kid has gifts. Some things you can't really teach a running back. He has the ability to make people miss. From the 47, first down. McVay hands off Sharp. Hit at the line of scrimmage and then brought down there for a very short gain. Yeah, 
that's the jet dive right there where you fake the jet sweep and then you run the dive on the inside. And then they also run a counter off of it as well, which is something that you have to do a misdirection play here. They're just hiding the ball and faking it to the jet sweep and then giving it to the uh, halfback up downhill. And it has a lot more of an effect if you do it from under center. But uh, the shotgun teams have figured out how to do it, and it's working well for them in that case. Number 15, Briggs Lunsford in on the tackle. Sharp on the option. Makes a nice cut at midfield at the 45. And then will be brought down number 41, Garrett Barnett, the linebacker, 6'2", 220 junior, the first man over there. Yeah, and that's one of the things I liked about Carborough this year is they run the option, and the quarterback doesn't even wait for that end to come all the way out sometimes. He'll see that Sharp has room outside, and he'll just pitch it in late and think that there's no way that that end's going to get out there, that linebacker's going to get out there and get him, and before you know it, he's run off 9 or 10 yards. He can make one or two people miss. A third down and two. Okay. Sharp. Right side, looks like he may have a first down, but there is a flag on the play. Coach Tudorin. Alex McVeigh said he's our senior quarterback. It all starts with him. He gets things going for us. Penalty is going to back up Carbrell. We have the illegal field. motion against the offense. It's a five yard penalty. Still third down. So it's third down and seven. Paul Doherty, the third member of our crew, is down on the field now. Paul. Paul Doherty, sideline with the athletic director here at South Iredale, Bobby Deal. What a quick start to this game. Yes, it is. Uh, kind of got hit hard early with that score on us, but we battled back really strong. Well, Coach, I know that uh, a state championship is on the line today, but hey, your kids have been doing great in all the sports throughout the season. Absolutely. Uh, our soccer team went to the fourth round this year, volleyball went to the fourth round, and in the state finals tonight, so it's been a great fall for us. Coach, I know you guys have played some of the big boys, the four A's and the three A's early in the year. How does that help you prepare when you get down into state championship time? Well, we play those bigger schools in our county and it makes it a lot tougher for us to battle those big boys and those big teams so that when the conference rolls around, we're ready to play. And Coach, uh, if you've got a great, uh, you know, a great uh, 12th man, it's got to be this crowd tonight. Oh yeah, we brought two charter buses of fans, two buses for the cheerleaders and the band. Uh, we tailgated starting at 2.30 tonight, so it's been wonderful. Bobby Deal, Athletic out. Director here at South Iredell, will send it back to Offense. you, Greg. All right, thank you the very first much, charge, Paul timeout. Doherty. It'll be a timeout on the field, the first one of this half, with 2.50 remaining here in the uh, first quarter. Score South Iredell 10 and Carborough 7, but they did. They did bring a lot of people here today in South Iredell. And uh, Carborough, you know, just south of uh, Chapel Hill, uh, you know, I was been hearing a lot of sports talk shows this week. Didn't even know there was a school out there. Well, now, <laughs> now you got to know. I mean, 15 yeah. and 0. We saw them a lot uh, on the, the News 14 Friday Night Final throughout the regular season of high school football and through the playoffs. A lot of good highlights there. Impressive to watch uh, on uh, on tape and. Uh, you know, we're seeing the same thing here for South Iredell. Uh, ties to both schools, actually, for me. I played against South Iredell in high school as I went to North Surrey High School, and they was in the same conference with us back in the day. And, you know, they were always formidable. You hated to go to states for to play them in some of those games that they were participating in. Sharp trying to get outside, and he is pushed out of bounds. Number 18 was the first man through Julius Bow, the defensive end, 6'2", 255, and he strung out Sharp. There's Coach Miller. Boy, he is intense on the sidelines. Here's taking another look. Yeah, you see that defensive speed, and you got linemen right now who are just hands hands away from getting to uh, the speedy sharp. And nor that shows you the South Iredale defense and how active they are and the type of impact they can have on a ball game. Well, they got two players that are known as the spur players here on the defense. One of them was number six, Alex Crosby, who got that tackle. Second down and 12, McVeigh. Flushed, and he's got a lot of running room. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, and he's out of bounds safely 
inside the 30 at the 27. And that's that speed I was talking about. That kid can move, and he's, got, he's really quick in space. He's perfect for this offense. He's just got to settle down. Here you see he fakes the option, sets up. He gets pressed. He steps up, and then he realizes there's nobody on the left side of the field, and he showcases that speed, and he's able to get the first down. He might want to tuck that football away, though. He's carrying it like his loaf of bread. Briggs Lunsford was the man who applied pressure number uh, 15. And then finally it was uh, Alex Crosby, the, the spur linebacker there to make the stop. First down and 10 inside the South Iredale 30. It will be McVeigh again, and he is hit at the 25 and dropped down there. Yeah, he's tough as nails, though. I don't accept, expect him to get up limping or anything. This kid is tough, and he's one of those guys that can take a lick in, but he doesn't want to take too many more licks like that from that inside right there. As uh, South Iredale shows you, they'll bring the pain if you if you stay in the window too long. And that time, we had a real big hit yeah, from uh, Julius Bowe, number 18. Yeah, the, de the defensive end, and he's 255. Yeah. Also number 32, Ethan Cram, the uh, linebacker, came up. Second down and eight, McVeigh. They air it out. Got a man over the middle. Ooh. Incomplete. It was tipped. And then it looked like Marlon uh, Johnson might have had a chance at it on the ricochet, but it fell incomplete. I had someone on Twitter ask, ask me, tell me that uh, the Bo kid may be the son of a boxer. And uh, the only Bo I can think of is Riddick Bo. So maybe that's his son. <laughs> that would be something else. Here's the tip. And then Johnson might have had a chance at it. If you're on Twitter, you're watching the game now, maybe you uh, uh, on uh, news14.com or uh, live on Time Warner Cable Sports. And you could just uh, send a tweet, hashtag it to, D to uh, TWC Sports NC, and uh, Joe will conversate with you on Twitter. Here's a little swing pass pattern to uh, Sharp and incomplete. Uh, play was uh, in trouble from the stars. Yeah. The defense had some great pressure up front. South Ardell sniffed it out. They saw that they came too free, so they backed out and was looking for anybody that could possibly be catching a screen. And it was for unfortunately, it was sharp. So he had to push it a little deep, and they weren't able to complete it. Well, a field goal would be around 40 yards. Well, this kid has plenty of leg. I've watched him kick, so he's got plenty of leg for it. It'll be interesting to see how accurate he is, but I know he has plenty of leg. Mike McPeak, a member of the men's soccer team that competed for a state championship a few short weeks ago to try to tie it up from uh, 42 yards. Just missing. Just missing. Yeah, right away, though, good job by South Ardell of holding their ground. They gave up a few first downs, but they, weren't, they were able to secure it without giving up any points, and they've got to be happy with their situation. Now what they've got to do is they've got to try to put some more points on the board to separate themselves, and it's up to Carborough to try to stop them and keep from giving up too many more points so that they can stay within the ball game. From their own 20, leading by three now. 10-7. Carter Finley Stadium, home of the NC State Wolfpack, and we've seen some great football here already today. King trying to throw it out here to Smith. Smith breaks a tackle at about the 16 and gets up to the 20. Yeah, made, made a play that looked like it was going to be bad and turned it into a good positive play with some grown man running after the catch. And he's a big guy, and he can take a hit, and you see right now they're setting up the screen for him. And Carbro sniffed it out. They come up and they make a big hit, but he just buckles him and, run, and is able to get five more yards after the contact. And yards after contact are sometimes what separate teams in games like this. Swing it out here on the far side. This is Stockton. Stockton at the 20, and then down he goes at the 25. A pickup of a few more. Uh, Roe Mellett, the uh, sophomore safety out there to uh, bring down, and we've got an injured player here now for South Iredale. And uh, number seven, I'm sorry, number seven is Douglas Parrish, the cornerback, was uh, there on the tackle. Yeah, you see the quarterback setting it up, and they get the little screen outside. The corner does a good job of coming up and making the play and stopping them for a very short game. Now, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. We'd like to thank HendrickCars.com for being a proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. That's HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. Under the lights here at Carter Finley, the two double A state final. And the crowd in attendance. 
from Carborough High School from Carborough, North Carolina. Record of 15 and 0. They've got a good crowd here to support the Jaguars. It is a third down and five now for the Vikings. King in the shotgun. He will roll out, pressured from behind. He sends it downfield. It is caught and then incomplete. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that was a hit there, and he was separated from the ball and getting up a little slowly. Now that'll get and that'll get the team fired up. And you hate to see the guy go up and, and, and come down like that after a hit. But he ran through him. He didn't launch himself. He ran through the play, and what a defensive hit. I saw that one coming from a mile away, though. And sometimes, like, when that happens, people get mad and say he's defenseless. But what is he supposed to do? Just stick his arms out there and let him catch the ball? Quarterback's rolling, quarterback's rolling. He lays it out there, and he just gets up and makes a play. He just He's on the ground. He stands up. He makes a play. Nice hit, and unfortunately for, for the receiver, he's unable to get up. But the shot was legal, and it was good, and he hit him with the shoulder pad, and an awesome play right there. Right in the ribs. Or a little bit, might have gotten the wind knocked out of him. It was quite I think he might have got the wind knocked out of him because of where he hit him, but the helmet hit the ball and the shoulder pad hit the body. Uh, the injured player was uh, number 14, Michael Fisher. And, uh, of course, we want to remind everybody that you're watching this game on uh, Carolina On Demand. Channels 199 and 1047, and Carolina on Demand is your source for high school football. You can watch this game and many other sporting events, including all eight state championships, right here on Carolina on Demand. Channels 199 and 1047. A little breeze out there, but not much to affect the game, and weather's been perfect for a state championship football wow, game what a roll. in the month of December, and it rolls down inside the 30 to the 29. Yeah, nice job right there by the punter. He didn't really kick it high, but it was an effective kick that bounced over the head of Sharp. And right now they've been able to eliminate him in other areas of the game. He's dominated games with special teams and other areas. And now, you know, he's not able to get loose in those other areas. And if you can just lock him into one side, which is offense, it'll be it'll be to your benefit. But you got a feeling that there's a charge left in Carborough in this first half that they're going to be able to exude. So South Ardell better be on their toes and ready to stop it. McVay to Sharp. Sharp at the 30 and he's knocked down at about the 32 yard line. Yeah, right now though that South Ardell defense is passing licks and they're doing a great job of getting their bodies in position and gap integrity and not giving Sharp a lot of places to go and being disciplined on defense is how you eliminate big play runners and that's exactly what they're doing right now. From the 33 gain of four, call it second down and six. Could be the final play of the first quarter. Sharp, oh, what a nice play. Number three, John Bustle, the spur back in there to make the stop. It's almost as if they told him, when you see that motion, you get right here because this is where the play is coming. And he's been standing there and made the play every time he's had an opportunity to make the play. End of the first quarter. We've seen a great opening quarter. The opening act is done, <laughs> the rest of the uh, production to, to go. We are looking forward to it. South Iron L10 and Carborough 7 will be back with more of this BBT North Carolina High School Football State Championship game on Time Warner Cable Sports next. Time Warner Cable is helping more people connect and enjoy the internet. With an emphasis on educational and employment opportunities, Time Warner Cable is partnering with community-based nonprofit organizations to provide broadband connectivity, ensuring all people can forget buffering and enjoy the benefits of fast internet. The internet shapes the way we work, live, learn, and socialize. That's why a connected nation is a priority at Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Whether you're on the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast-to-coast -coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. 
Our young women and men participate in 23 sports in almost 400 high schools across 100 counties throughout the school year. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association provides the framework and oversees and governs the eligibility of all student athletes. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. I am so excited to be here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and Z-Max Dragway. There is truly no place like this in the world and the excitement is everywhere. These are the most amazing racing facilities in America where over 200,000 of the finest fans come together to cheer on the best race car drivers in the world. You're absolutely going to flip when you see this amazing mecca of motorsports. So call 1-800-455-FANS for tickets and grab your cooler, grab your family and your friends and let's go racing. There's a little fan taking a little nap, although this is a very exciting contest. Maybe when they get a little old, they'll enjoy it and appreciate it a little bit more. <laughs> Getting ready to start the second quarter here now between South Ironell and Carborough. The Jaguars have a first down and 10 as they get the ball back. And there's a pass on the over the middle there to Sharp, who swings it out here to the sidelines and gets up across the 35 and the uh, 45, excuse me, out to the 46-yard line, and it's a first down. One of the things they do do is get to find a lot of ways to get the ball to Sharp, and sometimes you'll see it with a handoff, sometimes it'll be option, and sometimes they'll get him out on the, at line him about in the slot and get him the ball as a receiver. He does a lot of different things for this program, and he's a big part of what they do. So it's a first down and 10. This is the fourth play of the drive. It started at the Carborough 29. 130 yards overall for Carborough, only 87 now for South Iredale. Of course, this is only after one quarter of play. Sharp at the 45 at midfield, and Vance is close to the yardstick over there for a first down. We'll wait and see the spot. There you see they line him up at receiver and sent him in motion, and he ran the jet sweep. And you see he's only a sophomore, but he does a lot of different things for this team, and he's a big reason why they're stand, why they're playing in this game right here today. Now 2,300 yards rushing coming in. Here you see him in motion on the jet sweep. He gets it on the outside. He's got the ball in the proper hand, tucked up. He turns in. He sets up that first block by getting inside and showing he might go inside and hits the corner and is able to pick up about three extra yards because of that. Second down and two. Fake the handoff, McVeigh. Now, oh, ooh, what a nice ooh. fake. McVeigh at the 40, the 35, <laughs> and down to the 32. So Alex McVeigh uh, showing some quickness there and also some trickery. Yeah, McVeigh doing a little bit of Johnny football right there as he shows you the football and, and a lot of different ways. And he, there he hits the gap, and it looks like he's going to be easy to get. He shows the ball, pump fakes, gets the guy to turn away, and then he shows you his toughness right there. A lot of yards out the contact. And that's something that you don't really see a lot from quarterbacks. But this little kid is tough. From the 32, back in shotgun with Sharp on his left. Oh, no, let up. And it will be Sharp at the 30 and down to about the 28-yard line. Time of possession, seven minutes to four minutes in favor of Carborough. But uh, the big uh, stat there in the first quarter were the two interceptions uh, for uh, South Iredale as uh, they picked off McVeigh twice in that opening quarter. Yeah, two bad throws, two throws he probably wish he had back. And there you see the other coach with his beard. And interestingly enough, they both decided to grow beards this year yeah. in honor <laughs> for their teams and team support. And it's obviously working well. Next year we're going to have a bunch of bearded coaches, and uh, but only a few are going to make it to the championship. Second down in six. And this is the end around this time. Number seven will get the ball. That is Douglas Parrish. And he gets down to about the 21. It will be a first down for Carborough. Missed on a 42-yard field goal attempt their last drive. That was a nine-play drive. Now this is the sixth play of this drive, but there is a flag down. We have a hold here. against the offense. That's a 10-yard wow. penalty. Repeat second down. That's a big call right there because it negates a really big play by the offense. As the re on the reverse, you saw the, the on the end of the round, you saw that he was hitting it hard and pushing his way up, and maybe that's the hold they were calling right there. I'm not sure. 
but it looks like they were both tied up. But he does, the running back does a good job of getting positive yards after contact in that situation. So from the 40 now, second down and 18. McVay steps up, finds Sharp at the 35, and he is down to the 32-yard line. Third down and 10 now. Here you see the quarterback getting the ball to Sharp, who runs a little quick hitch on the outside, and they do a good job of getting him the ball in that situation, and he makes the most of it every chance he gets. Draws four defenders out there. Third down and 10, McVeigh all by himself in the backfield. Fakes that little handoff, swings it out here to Sharp, tipped uh -oh. up in the air and incomplete. Boy, the big defensive end over there getting a hand on it. And it will be fourth down. Yeah, Big Bo decided to, he read the play and he took took the right angle and was able to make a play on the ball. And, uh, you know, they're very fortunate that that ball was a tipped in an area where they could get a, could get a tip and uh, reel it in. So fourth down and they'll send in the punting unit. Malik Carrington is the punter. Fortunate for Carver, no one was there. So Carrington will try to pin South Iredale deep. And that's the case of another holding penalty or a penalty killing a drive. Nice little pooch. It's going to bounce short unless it takes a nice bounce. No, it does not. It takes a Viking bounce. It'll have to be downed at the 21. So it'll be good field position there now for South Iredale. And good field position is always a plus, and they've been the beneficiaries of a lot of good field position today because of turnovers and because of some special teams play. From their own 21-yard line. Three and out the last time they had the ball. It's going to send out three wide receivers now to the top of your screen, and one to the bottom. King in the shotgun. Might be time to showcase that big running back now and get him involved in the game. Smith at the 20. Smith at the 25. He's at the 30. Lowers the boom at the 31. On the corner, Parrish. There is a flag on the play. And this one's coming back. Yeah, both teams getting a little bit sloppy right now with... Uh, some holding calls and some blocking calls. Uh, they, they're going to have to clean it up or they're both going to start to struggle a little bit more to score points. We have a holding foul against the offense. Repeat first down after a 10-yard penalty. Well, after the way that both these teams started out, so excited, so energized by the opening minutes. You wonder if there's going to be a little letdown here as uh, time wanes on here in the second quarter. you got to think that there has to be some. They couldn't keep up that pace that they were playing at at that, that, that period of time. But it's interesting to see that, you know, both teams have a philosophy, and their philosophies are pretty similar, and their styles are pretty similar, and they have two different guys in the backfield who do it in two different ways, but a lot of the same processes. Smith on the carry, not much there. Big number 78 is Xavier Dunn, a junior, 6'3", 285, coming in and uh, preventing that play from going much further down the field. Second down now and 15. King steps up in the pocket, intercepted at the 20, at the 15. And down to the 14-yard line, picked off by Malik Carrington, number 25. Yeah, that's something you can't afford to do right there is uh, give, a, give Carborough the short field. And that time, he threw the ball and not really sure where he was going with it. He had a dig route, and he was throwing it, but the, the defensive player undercut it and was able to get the interception, but the quarterback didn't have the right arc on the ball. He needs to throw the high BB and let it come down, and that time he tried to thread the needle. And anytime you do that and there's a linebacker or a DB in the area, you're going to get picked off, and that's what happens. Third turnover in the game. This the first for Carborough. So they have it first down and 10 at the South Irondale 12-yard line. The 
McVeigh hands off Sharp. Sharp at the 10 and down to about the eight yard line. Right now they got a short field and they're gonna to try to take advantage of it and that means a lot of Mr. Sharp getting the football. It won't be any secret that he's gonna be the guy handling it. And if he's not handling it, it's gonna be because they're handing it off or the, or the quarterback's keeping it and turning the corner. Eight minutes to go here in the first half. There's Carrington, one who intercepted the pass. Second down and six. Handoff, front side at the five, four, three, and out of bounds at about the one yard line goes Parrish. Good job right there of blocking and execution as they weren't sure where the ball was gonna go. They got the ball to the inside and it looks like it might be close enough for a first down. Looked like they had number 47 of uh, Funis. Six foot four, 240 pound sophomore in there as a blocking back, number 47. He's also the defensive end. Yeah, good job by the receivers of blocking downfield. And in order to run the ball, you've got to have receivers that are willing to block for you. That's Funis right there, that fullback spot, handoff to Sharp, dives over for the touchdown. Impressive athletic leaping ability. Yeah, young man and possesses for a, a lot. Mm. Young man possesses a lot. And you got to be right. He's one of those kids who can do a lot of good things, and he's showcasing his talent right now in front of everyone. So South Iredale with 10 points off turnovers, and Carborough gets seven right here off the turnover. McPeak now in to attempt the extra point to give Carborough a four-point lead. And it is blocked. Take a look at that again and make sure to see who got a hand on that one, but that's going to make it only a three-point game now. Let's take another look. This is the touchdown. Yeah, this is the touchdown when Sharp lets his body go and catapults himself into the end zone. Uh, awesome job by him. And there you see it again from the side. He definitely let his body go and threw his body to the wind and was able to get in there and score a touchdown. So with 7.32 to go here in the first half, Carbro now leads 13 to 10. South Iredale sidelines. Guys getting some work in tonight, being the ball boys, making sure the Balls get to the officials. Don't have to wipe them off, though, today. I mean, it's beautiful weather out there right now. Yeah, it's awesome weather out there right now. Couldn't ask for a better day and better championships this year. The 99th annual North Carolina High School Football State Championships. McPeak boots this one up high and short. We'll be taking it about the 24. That's Woo! the 25. Coming this way is uh, Everhart. And down at about the 40 to 41 yard line goes Jacoby Everhart. Yeah, some vicious hits being laid on the field right there. And that block was big by South Ardell. Somebody got decleated on the outside. Here we take a look at it. You can see the pursuit coming in right here. You're going to get a big block coming out front. That's big right there. So first down and 10 from their own 41 yard line. Carter Finley Stadium, home of NC State, got a new uh, got a new coach today. Yeah, got him a new coach, new look, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with how that and how that develops. And this will be King. He's going to keep it himself, 40, and out to about the 45-yard line. Yeah, uh, a number a number of different candidates, but uh, from Northern Illinois, right? Yes, uh, Northern Illinois. Uh, supposed to be a really good recruiter we'll see how it works out and you know how the logistics of the hire makes a lot of sense uh, state was really scrambling and trying to put together some top names and 
Uh, Dave Doran is his name, and he's one of those guys that can make a difference. Well, Chaston Smith can also make a difference. He runs uh, right up the middle, finds some good running room inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. Yeah, every time I watch him run the ball, I'm wondering why his tongue isn't hanging out because if he was my running back, He'd be running it every single time until he told me he couldn't go anymore because it seems like he gets about six or seven yards every time he touches the ball. Again, up the middle, and he pushes that pile forward to the 40 and inside the 40. And that's a luxury when you've got a big guy who can move like that and, and run like that and with, run with power but still have speed uh, to go along with it. There's not a lot of guys like him in the country. Here you see he gets the ball and he gets north-south really quick. And he punishes those defenders as they come up and try to make the tackle. Second down and seven after the gain of three. And King keeps it himself. Makes yeah. a move and loses the football, but he gets it back. I was just thinking to myself he needs to put the ball in the other hand when he was about to make that cut. And he tried to put his ball in the other hand when he made the cut and got hit in the process. And he's very fortunate he was able to get back on top of the football. Here you see the fake, and he's holding it with two hands, but he's got it in one hand like a loaf of bread. He's got to keep that ball tucked secured to the body and carry it high and tight. Otherwise, this, this is going to happen a lot to him in his future. Third down, seven. King with time. Now he's going to run it. 40, 35, hurdles the tackler and gets down close to the 33 where he would have a first down. He's going to be about a yard short right now, I think. Yeah, based on the spot, you are right. Number 44, James Scott, the linebacker, in on the tackle. So fourth down, and the Vikings will go for it. But before they do, there'll be a timeout. So a timeout on the field. Fourth and one coming up. And we want to ask you, do you want to stay up to date with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association? Well, now there's an app for it. You can get instant access to schedules, brackets, upcoming events with the North Carolina High School Athletic Association's new mobile app. Download the app today by simply scanning the QR code on your screen that you see right there or by visiting their website, www.nchsaa.org. You can also get live stats being streamed right now on their website and links to uh, watch the state championships on the internet via news14.com. Here's LaChaston Smith jumping over on a fourth and down and one, and he's able to get down to the 21-yard line. He was a wildcat back in that formation, got the direct snap from center, hurdled the line of scrimmage, and found more greener pasture on the other side. That has to be like a brick wall right there as you've got three guys in front of him and then an offensive line in front of him, and he's going to hit it up in there and just jump in the air and showcase his athletic ability. And you see he's running, and that ball was juggling. I thought it might come loose, but he was able to corral it. Smith again inside the 20 down to about the 18. Such a big punishing runner. Yeah, and they're doing exactly what I said I would do on this drive, is give him the ball early and often on this drive and take advantage of that because you've you got to get, take advantage of that before he starts to wear down. Second down, and Smith. On the uh, right side, 20-15, and he's down to the 12. He'll be shy of a first down by about a yard or two. Paul Doherty is now down on the sidelines with another special guest. Paul. Sideline, Carter Finley Stadium. Paul Doherty with the athletic director, April Ross. Six years Carborough's been online, but you guys have had a lot of athletic success. Yes, uh, we've had 11 state championships. We won the Wells Fargo Cup last year, and uh, it's been a tremendous ride. How exciting is it to uh, play for a state championship a few miles from home? Uh, and, and playing in state championships never gets old, but being in Carter-Finley with this crowd, this atmosphere, and our community is tremendous. Well, I have to ask you about the battle of the beards tonight between these two coaches. 
Well, uh, Coach Tudor has had a beard for a long time. Uh, it's been, it's very long. I hope it gets longer. We'll see if anyone is going to trim that beard tonight. Paul already sideline. We'll send it back to you, Greg. All right. Thank you so much. Well, that would be uh, some kind of a post-game celebration, wouldn't it? If uh, if it does get trimmed tonight. First down and goal is Lachaston Smith barreled over the center. And this time it's a run off that left side and in for the touchdown is Ethan Cram. He was the last uh, back in that I formation and he just followed would-be blocker, uh, blockers and went in untouched. Basically what they've done is they found a way to run the power eye out of the uh, Wildcat and not incorporate the quarterback so you get the extra blocker. And that's one of the things that uh, for interesting formation we haven't seen a lot of. And I'm sure that people who are watching it today are going to be inquiring about it and they're probably going to copy it a little bit because it makes perfect sense. Now Kingsley, Spencer Kingsley, in to attempt the extra point. And I think he tucks it into the upright there on the right side. No. I thought he missed it. He missed it. Oh, he did. Okay. He did miss it. And so the lead stays at three, but this time it's a three-point lead for South Irona. Here you see the run on the Wildcat play, and he just waltzes into the end zone as they have more blockers than they have runners. Here's the power I set, and now you've got three blockers in front of you instead of two, and it's a real simple play, and it's, it's, it makes a lot of sense. And I'm surprised we hadn't seen anybody do it before now. Eight-yard touchdown run. So South Iredell answers Carborough's score. And with 3.07 remaining here in the first half, Carborough 13, South Iredell 16. The 99th annual North Carolina High School Athletic Association State Championships. We've had a great day here at Carter Finley. I know there's been some other great games around the area, including uh, some games at Wake Forest Grove Stadium in Winston-Salem. BB&T field there. And uh, the nightcap of that game is going on as we speak. Also can be seen live here on Time Warner Cable Sports and news14.com on the on the internet. This is a run back up there by number, uh, it's up across the 40, out to about the 42 yard line, goes number nine, Shamak Dolby. And special teams are proving to be big, extra point missed, and then a nice uh, kickoff return, and those are the things that you have to do to get back into ball games, especially when the ball games are close. And if you make enough special, te special teams mistakes, it'll change the dynamics of the game. So from the 42, basically a short field. They're only 58 yards away from answering again. McVeigh sends Parrish in motion. It'll be sharp, hit at the line of scrimmage, bounces off his own player, kicks it to the outside and picks up about three yards, but a nice tackle. Made there by uh, Parrish, number 14. Good job of making a sure tackle by Parrish as he was able to bring the runner down out there by himself on an island. And here you see Sharp coming inside and you see the threes waiting there for him again on that play. And then he makes a guy miss with a road runner move. But here he does, Parrish does a good job of hanging on and making sure that Sharp doesn't get outside. We have a timeout for the team in white. First charge timeout of the half. South Ironell wants to call a timeout. They lead by three here. As we have a second down and eight for Carborough. And so a little uh, break in the action, but uh, just a reminder that you can watch all eight state championship games in their entirety anytime you want with the just as easy with a click of a button there to push play on Carolina On Demand, channels 199 and 1047. All the action, I mean, uh, and, and most of the people that are here obviously can't watch this game live because they're here watching it, but they can see this game anytime they want or any of the other seven state championship games on Carolina On Demand, and there's so much more on there, so we invite you to go check out 
those channels and browse because there's so much interesting content that we have on for you. We did the soccer championships, the volleyball championships coming up here in a week or two, the cheerleading championships from downtown Raleigh, the convention center. So lots going on and lots of uh, content there on demand. McVeigh rolls out to the left, throws downfield. It is tipped and incomplete. Actually almost intercepted. Yeah, another bad pass by McVeigh and that's the one thing he hasn't done well is throw the football outside of the bomb he threw at the beginning of the game. He hasn't thrown the football with a lot of good accuracy. And he's got to do a better job of getting his shoulders pointing at the target if he's going to let it go on some of these throws he's making on the run. He's thrown two already to that man right there. Unfortunately for him, he's got a different jersey on. So now it's third down and eight. crowd has been fantastic in this game. Yeah, all day we've had some of the best crowds you could possibly have in high school football. McVay swings it out here in the big defensive end. Bo is there to knock it down. That what a player. That is amazing. He's some of the plays he makes, it makes you shake your head and wonder, you know, how is this kid, you know, not being talked about more? And then sometimes you'll see him and he may take a player two off. But watching in the day, he's motivated today, and he's making every single play you could possibly make uh, he, on the football field. He's 6'2", 255. His number is 18, and he's uh, running around here with the agility of, of a wide receiver wearing worthy of wearing the number 18, but he's been fantastic. He has a lot of ability, and he's going to be one of those guys that could be a, a difference maker for somebody down the line. Nice punt. Everhart returns it up to the 30, and that's where... South Iredale will have it first and 10. Right now, South Iredale is probably going to go in uh, secure mode. They're probably not going to do anything risky. Probably run the ball a little bit and throw some short passes. Yeah, they'll have the possession to start the second half. And they lead in this contest. We've got a chance to tack on some more. We'll see what happens. Two minutes and three seconds. A very entertaining first half between a couple of first timers. Lachaston Smith comes back the other way, now cuts it up the middle. He dances to the 30, the 35, and out to about the 38 yard line, a pickup of about eight yards. Yeah, that's usually the way you start a two minute offense is if, and determines how you're gonna do it. You start out with a little sprint draw, which is what they did. And the quarterback gets it, he sprints hard back, gives the running back a chance. He starts to the left, doesn't like what he sees. He cuts it back to where he came from. He's got a few blocks, making a few people miss, and then he gets gang tackled. King's going to air it out here. It is caught first down at the 43-yard line by DeAndre Rankin. And right away they come back with a little outside pass, get a first down, and now you'll see them mar try to march it down the field. The officials are now. The chain crew's having a little trouble getting set up. Please reset the game clock to 1.30. Thank you. So we'll have one and a half minutes on the clock. Yeah, the chain crew was struggling and they were supposed to stop the clock because it was the first down and it didn't get stopped. So they were able to get everything back in order and now nobody's getting cheated on time. First down and 10 from the 43, maybe the 44. King steps up downfield. And it's incomplete. Number five, Rankin, being covered by Dolby. Great coverage there. Yeah, good job of coverage and a good job of closing on the football and not giving up even though it gets in on it. Make sure you just try to strip it out when you get a chance. Here you see the quarterback sets, throws a nice ball on the inside. Looks like the receiver's got position, but the DB's fighting through to make sure that he doesn't make the catch in that play. Smith at the 40, Woo! and he is brought down hard. Number 74, Scott Periton. A linebacker in to make a stop. Yeah, nice job right there by Carbro of extending it out. They ran the sprint draw again, and they were able to get out there and make a big play. And there you see the closeout hits 
as he's bouncing off a few tackles. And then you'll see 73 and 74 coming to the pitcher to make plays in the end. And that's what you got to do with the big man. You got to hit him hard a little bit and let him think about it too. If you can get him to tip in a little bit, it changes the perplexity of this game. Third down and 13. King on the move at the 45. Now pitches oh, it. That might be a four pass. Pitches it to number 17, Scott Miller Jr. Oh, that was close to being a four pass, but it looks like it may have not have been. And he gets the first down down to the 44 yard line. And now Coach Scott Miller wants his team to spike the football as soon as the chains get set here with 30 seconds remaining. And they do. Two-handed spike. <laughs> now when you're trying to force it down with two hands and uh, yeah. on the sides of the football rather than having one on top yeah. to actually force it down. <laughs> Here's the play we were talking the about. Air. The quarterback's moving and he's moving forward and let's see what happens right here. I, may, I might be wrong. Yeah, that looked like it might have been a forward pitch. He was behind the line and he was on the line. It was If not, it was close. But uh, nonetheless, you know, it's up to Carborough to make a play and stop, stop him in this situation. King's pass broken up, batted down. Number seven, Parrish, the cornerback in there to drop that one down. Yeah, like they might have run a corner blitz and he was able to get in there and make a play and knock that ball down. So now it's third down and 10 with 24 seconds remaining. King. Reverse Smith, pass. the reverse pass, but the defense is in there nicely, and King's just going to have to go down. Number 44, James Scott, the linebacker, came in there and blew that play right up. Yeah, smart play right there by the quarterback, too. Don't try to be a hero. Pick it up and have something bad happen. Just get, out, get down on it, and let's punt the football and get out of here if we can, and maybe even let the clock run out if we can. And he did a great job. James Scott did a reading that play. We have you know, a timeout. Direct snap right to Smith. For the home team. That's their third and final timeout of the half. If Carborough was going to call a timeout, they should have called it a lot earlier. They're going to call the timeout, Ms. Carborough, with 11 game seconds game to go. 14, it's fourth down and 10. So, and they're actually going to put three more seconds on the clock, so there'll be 14 seconds to go in this first half and maybe looking for a punt return. Yeah, maybe get a punt return and get decent field position or maybe have something positive happen and get a chance to at least throw it to the end zone one time. Uh, it'll all depend upon the field position in this play. So Malik Carrington, excuse me, apologize. It is uh, Kaderil Bowler, number 10, will stand at his 24 and punt this one away. The line drives it. It'll roll out of bounds at the 40-yard line. So that quickly only took off so many seconds off the clock. It took like five off, so there's nine seconds remaining. Yeah, that's probably going to lead to Carborough either just running one play and seeing what happens. But uh, not they don't have the, the, the leg to go, the arm to throw the ball anywhere close to that. So it'll be interesting to see what they come out here and call. But I'm sure it'll be something to try to get the ball to sharp and get him on the edge. Oh, they're just going to down it. And that'll do it for the end of the first half. I thought maybe they were calling a timeout, set up a punt return, try to get some kind of return maybe with Sharp. Well, that's what they were hoping for, but South Idaho was smart and kept it away from him. Don't let the one guy on the field who can beat you beat you. Uh, as we saw early in the year from a lot of teams and even on the college level, how teams let the one guy on the team on the field beat you who could possibly beat you. So end of one. And our score at the end of one, South Iredale 16 and Carborough 13. And it should make for an interesting second half, these two first-timers. And Coach Paul or, uh, Paul Doherty will be uh, standing on the sidelines here. We're going to go down to him here real quick to get a chance to chat with uh, Coach Scott Miller of South Iredale. Let's go down to Paul Doherty right now. Paul? On the field here with Coach uh, Scott Miller. Coach, if there were any nerves uh, with two teams in their first state championship appearance, that went away quickly with this fast and very physical game. 
Yeah, you know, both teams are playing hard. I think we got two really good coach teams on the field. We just got to limit our mistakes. We're not we're not playing football the way we play football. We're letting somebody else dictate to that. So we're gonna get that fixed at halftime. Well, you go into the locker room with a three point lead. Obviously, uh, with these guys' ability to score points, you probably wish you had a little bit of a bigger lead going into halftime. But what's the adjustments you look to make in the third quarter? Well, we got our defense has got to get off the daggum field. We're staying out there too long. I understand we're not giving up points, but we're wearing ourselves out. Our offense is moving the ball pretty good on them, but we got to get off the field. We're just giving up too many third and longs. Third and longs are killing us tonight. Coach, we'll let you get back to the locker room. That's Coach Miller on the field. We'll send it back to you, Greg. All right, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Coach Miller, for stopping for a few minutes to talk with us here before halftime. You know, a lot of adjustments to be made here in the second half, and his offense will have a chance to get out there on the football field as they will have possession to start the second half. So from the 2012 BB&T North Carolina High School Athletic Association State Championships, the 99th annual, our halftime score, South Iredale 16, Carborough 13. We'll take a break and come back with the start of the second half in a few minutes. CHSAA Volleyball Championships, now available on Carolina On Demand, the official television partner of the NCHSAA. I am so excited to be here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and Z-Max Dragway. There is truly no place like this in the world and the excitement is everywhere. These are the most amazing racing facilities in America where over 200,000 of the finest fans come together to cheer on the best race car drivers in the world. You're absolutely going to flip when you see this amazing mecca of motorsports. So call 1-800-455-FANS for tickets and grab your cooler, grab your family and your friends and let's go racing. Whether you're on the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast-to-coast -coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. In sports, it's all about the numbers. The Ford Sports Night is on seven nights a week. Seven nights equals more than 200 minutes every single week. That's more than 1,200 hours yearly of non-stop sports with an award-winning sports cast and the only live nightly show about local sports in North Carolina. How you like them numbers? The Ford Sports Night, every night at 10 on News 14 Carolina. Only on Time Warner Cable. Welcome to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association's Football Championship Halftime Report. I'm Marty Skold. The NCHSAA works hard all year to host special championships like the one that you're watching today. But that is only a portion of the work that they do to build the leaders of tomorrow. North Carolina is a beautiful state. From the coastal plains to the smoky mountains of western North Carolina, from the thriving metropolitan cities to the rural tobacco roads. The stunning landscape sits as a backdrop to one of North Carolina's most favorite activities, high school sports. Travel along the coast to Kill Devil Hills to watch the first flight Nighthawks compete, or to the town of Cresswell and see the Cresswell Tigers. Drive inland to the Triangle and take in a Broughton Capitals game, or drive south to Fayetteville and take in a Douglas Bird Eagles contest. Just inside the North Carolina border sits the city of Charlotte and enjoy the Olympic Trojans and the Mustangs of Myers Park. Head due west along the Western North Carolina mountain roads. One can hear the crowd roar on the Smoky Mountain Mustangs, the Cherokee Braves, the Mountaineers of Tuscola, or the Rams of T.C. Robertson. High school sports, the fields, courts, and playgrounds of developing youth. 
young men and women learning life lessons taught through competition, teamwork, and fair play. Hello, I'm Davis Whitfield, Commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. We're one of the oldest associations in the nation, and this year we'll celebrate our 100th birthday. We like to think we're one of the best organizations with one of the most respected reputations in the country. And our mission is clear. First and foremost, the NCHSAA is an organization dedicated to our student athletes. We believe sportsmanship is the most important value sportsmanship we learn. Sportsmanship is the most important value we learn. We believe in fair play. A level playing field. A level playing field. A chance for anyone to anyone win. Anyone to win. And when we create fair play, we all win. We all win. We believe in respect for our teammates, our opponents, our coaches, and ourselves. We respect the rules and we commit ourselves to play by the rules. And we believe in honesty and integrity. These are values I will keep with me for the rest of my life. Our young women and men participate in 23 sports in almost 400 high schools across 100 counties throughout the school year. Our job is to provide the necessary governance and leadership for our interscholastic athletic programs that both support and enrich the educational experience of our students. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association provides the framework and oversees and governs the eligibility of all student athletes. As an athletic director and coach, I appreciate the willingness of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association to communicate with us regarding student eligibility. I always come away from the meetings knowing what I can and cannot do. Our intent is to create respect for the rules of the game, to prepare the student athlete to respect the rules of life. Sports are a big part of my life. You learn very quickly that you have to rely on your teammate. No one person can win or lose a ball game. One of the first things you learn when you make a team is that it takes a lot of dedication and commitment. Commitment to yourself, your teammates, and your coaches to have any chance at success. Our job is also to create competitive opportunities that emphasize fairness and good sportsmanship for all participants. For high school athletic competitions to be fair, it is vital there be a level playing field for all schools, from our smallest to our largest. But we are constantly asking, does this concept improve the opportunities for our student athletes? Is it fair? Is there something more we can do to make our programs and our championships better? The playoffs and championships are sometimes scheduled on major college campuses. It's a tremendous honor for students to play in these facilities. For many, it's their final game because less than 1% will play at the next level. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association oversees the selection, the hiring, and the training of all our game officials. Nothing is more important than getting the call right. The NCHSAA puts us through a rigorous testing procedure to make sure we know and understand the rules. The summer coaching clinics are beneficial because the staff reviews important procedures, clarifies policies, and gives us the latest rules updates. Everyone wants to see a great game, but the most important thing from our perspective is to provide fair competition. One of our most important initiatives is to constantly promote sportsmanship and healthy choices through our Student Services Division. These programs both enrich the educational experience and help keep our young people in school. Our team volunteers time regularly throughout the season. We've been to nursing homes and we've spent time reading to the elderly. To be honest, I think we're the lucky ones because we meet so many great people. They really enjoy us being there and I think it's really important to give back. To generate the funds we need to provide opportunities to operate our programs, we look to a number of sources, including ticket sales from playoffs and championships, various fees collected, along with the dues from our schools. And we reach out to our corporate sponsors to assist us in raising the necessary funds. We've been investing in the North Carolina High School Athletic Association for a long time because we know that our investment is not just about high school athletics, it's about investing in the lives of our young people. No doubt, we're investing in future leaders, and we're proud to do so. A strong financial structure drives our programs, but the backbone of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association is governance and enforcing our policy and procedure while promoting leadership and fair play. 
We want to see these talented young people develop into future leaders. Leaders we can all be proud of. Leaders that make our schools, our communities, and our state a better place. For a hundred years, our goals have been clear. We govern, we develop and inspire leadership, sportsmanship, integrity, fair play, and we provide championship opportunities. This is our mission and our obligation to these young men and women. Through sports, we believe we create productive citizens today and future leaders for tomorrow. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Stay right there. After the break, we'll tell you about a special way you can help those less fortunate around the holidays. Our young women and men participate in 23 sports in almost 400 high schools across 100 counties throughout the school year. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association provides the framework and oversees and governs the eligibility of all student athletes. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Whether you're in the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast-to-coast -coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. Time Warner Cable is helping more people connect and enjoy the internet. With an emphasis on educational and employment opportunities, Time Warner Cable is partnering with community-based nonprofit organizations to provide broadband connectivity, ensuring all people can forget buffering and enjoy the benefits of fast internet. The internet shapes the way we work, live, learn, and socialize. That's why a connected nation is a priority at Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. I am so excited to be here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and Z-Max Dragway. There is truly no place like this in the world and the excitement is everywhere. These are the most amazing racing facilities in America where over 200,000 of the finest fans come together to cheer on the best race car drivers in the world. You're absolutely going to flip when you see this amazing mecca of motorsports. So call 1-800-455-FANS for tickets and grab your cooler, grab your family and your friends and let's go racing. Time Warner Cable and News 14 Carolina invite you to help families in need over this holiday season. Our Holiday Hopes and Happenings initiative is helping the Salvation Army gather toys to distribute to North Carolina families. For years, the Charlotte chapter of the Salvation Army has served thousands of needy families through its Christmas Bureau. News 14 Carolina's David Carnoto shows us what the Christmas Bureau means for one thankful family. <laughs> This is a great place. Lourdes R.C. knows his old department store building well. This is a wonderful place for people who are giving and receiving. Believe it or not, the crumbling ceiling tiles and the peeling paint bring her comfort. It's about giving. It's about love. She equates this place, the Salvation Army Christmas Bureau, to heaven, a sanctuary for smiles. Last year, as a volunteer, she watched needy family after needy family register and receive toys, bikes, and a promise of a more positive holiday. It's wonderful to help everybody else. That was last year. This year, RC's relationship with this building is a bit different. Last year was a great year. This year is kind of mm, 
Last year, R.C. was working three jobs to make ends meet. She's now unemployed. No, I'm not working. A family emergency forced R.C. to quit her jobs. While she's supporting her family emotionally, she can't financially, especially this time of year. This time of year is so stressful because they want toys, they want clothes, or they want the other things that the kids have. Instead of being a volunteer this year, she's a mom in need coming to this beat up building for help. This is perfect because this will be for Jack and this will be for Alex. Her purpose here this year may be different, but oddly, the outcome will be the same as a year before. Oh my God, they're going to be happy. She expects to smile. Hopefully next year we won't be here, but this place is the best place ever because everybody comes together and they help. In Charlotte, David Cronodal, News 14 Carolina. You can help families in your community. Please drop off a new unwrapped toy at participating Time Warner Cable Customer Care Centers. You can do this through December the 12th. To find your nearest location, visit TWC.com events. The Salvation Army will deliver your gifts to families in need this holiday season. Whether you're on the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast-to-coast -coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. NCHSAA Volleyball Championships, now available on Carolina On Demand, the official television partner of the NCHSAA. I am so excited to be here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and ZMAX Dragway. There is truly no place like this in the world, and the excitement is everywhere. These are the most amazing racing facilities in America, where over 200,000 of the finest fans come together to cheer on the best race car drivers in the world. You're absolutely going to flip when you see this amazing mecca of motorsports. So call 1-800-455-FANS for tickets and grab your cooler, grab your family and your friends, and let's go racing. Time Warner Cable is helping more people connect and enjoy the internet. With an emphasis on educational and employment opportunities, Time Warner Cable is partnering with community-based nonprofit organizations to provide broadband connectivity, ensuring all people can forget buffering and enjoy the benefits of fast internet. The internet shapes the way we work, live, learn, and socialize. That's why a connected nation is a priority at Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. And we welcome you back to Carter Finley Stadium, home of the Wolfpack. And we're at the half. The Vikings from South Iredale showing their teeth here tonight and leading by 3 16 13. Down on the field is Paul Dorney with uh, another head coach. Paul, take it away. A chance now on the sideline with Carver head coach Jason Tudrin. Coach, uh, I, I mentioned this with Coach South Iredell just a second ago. First time either of these teams were in the state final, but you can never tell. These two teams are just uh, at it, just from the opening gun. Yeah, great, great high school football game right now. I got two quarters left, and uh, it's anybody's ball game. Kids are playing hard on both sides. It's, it's the way it's supposed to be. Obviously, this is almost like a home game for you over here uh, in, in Carter Finley, just a few miles away from Carbro. What does it mean for a program this young, just six years online, to be at this level? We don't have enough time left in the night to be able to talk about that, but it's special for our community. They've done a great job of supporting us. So what a memory for these kids, because what high school football is all about, making lasting memories. And we got two quarters of football left to try to do something about that, so we're excited for it. Well, Coach, we'll let you get back to it. Thank you very much thank for you. joining us. We'll send it back to you, Greg. All right, thank you very much, Paul, and uh, thank you very much. Coach Tudrin uh, in his sixth year at Carborough High School where tonight his team trails right now 16-13. And we are 30 seconds away from the start of this second half. Greg Mayer along with Joe Simmons here. Time Warner Cable Sports live 
these state championships being seen live. And, uh, of course, you can see them all again on Carolina On Demand. There are the Jaguars dressed in the uh, black and purple. 15-0. and 0. And uh, on the other side, of course, the Jaguars from South Ardale. 13 and 2. And ready for the second half. They will start out with possession here in the second half. So we're looking forward to seeing what they do here to start the third quarter. And uh, Joe, you, they talked about trying to get their, off, their defense off the field so their offense can be on the field. Well, now they're going to get a chance to start here with quarterback uh, Dave and King. They um, don't have much of a passing threat here tonight, but they do have the rushing of uh, LeChaston Smith, 111 yards already on uh, just 15 carries, so he's averaging 7.1 yards per carry. If you were the head coach, well, we would definitely see him a lot more running the football here in the second half. He's one of those guys that can get it done, and he seems to be a power runner, and there's nothing really to save him for after this. This is one of the kids who can be a difference maker, so I suspect he's probably going to get it early and often. It'll be McPeak teeing it up at the 40. There's Carter Finley Stadium. A beautiful sight. A lot of people here today for both teams. South Iron Ale from uh, Statesville, North Carolina, and Carborough from Carborough, North Carolina. There is Smith. Taking a look at some stats. Possession time, 12 minutes to 11 minutes in favor of Carborough, so relatively even. Total yards, Carborough 193 to 157 for South Iredale. The, putt, uh, the kickoff is high and out of bounds. And so it'll be first down and 10 for South Iredale if they take it right from the 35. Yeah, right away, you know, uh, you have to see what's, what's going to happen. And these first couple of plays are going to be a big part of the process. And South iredale has been able to run the ball at will and throwing the ball they've been a little in enigmatic but if they can get some stops right here early at Carbro that being if they can get some stops early it'll be big for them tr to try to turn the momentum of this game around and the key in the first half have been the turnovers two turnovers uh, interceptions for Carbro led to 10 South Iredale points and uh, one interception thrown for uh, South Iredale and that led to seven Car uh, Carbro points once again it is Cram, and they start out in that uh, Wildcat, and Cram runs it for a couple yards. Yeah, that Wildcat power eye that we saw them with some success. And right here, you got to think their coach may be thinking that we're going to come out, and here you see it, we're going to come out and attack downhill to try to wear this Carborough team out since they're a little bit bigger. But Carborough's up to answer the challenge right there as you see linebackers and everyone else sticking their head in there and making plays. And again, another run for short yardage. And setting the tone early, he talked about his defense not being able to get off the field on third down, even though they weren't giving up points. Carborough has to feel the same way. And right now is a good opportunity for Carborough to get the ball back and uh, be aggressive on offense when they get when they get another possession. Well, they substitute four people in to the Vikings, and one of them is King. Got big uh, boards on the sidelines signaling in the plays. King will roll out to this near side, is pressured, eludes pressure once, is not able to get away a second time. Yeah, that Carbo defense is swarming right there, and initial pressure caused them to pull up, and the secondary pressure was there as they were able to step in and get the big sack, and now they're going to have to punt it to the danger sharp. Atwater, Gerald Atwater, number 73, one of the first men in. Here you see the half roll and the pressure as 74 gets in and makes a play. And then he initially 73 seemed like they're working in pairs. They're always around the ball together, just like we had a little bit earlier in the game with 51 to 61. And Sharp fumbles the ball, but I think he got it back. So 74, Scott Perriton was the first one through, and then Atwater finished him off. Sharp had that punt go right off his fingertips, but bounced right next to him. He was able to gobble it back up. Fortunate for him, he was able to get his hands on the ball. A turnover right there would have changed the whole complexity of this game because uh, South Idaho would have gotten the ball with great field position and a little bit of momentum on their side. So first down in 10 for Carborough. 
And they have it at their own 34. And a fake to Sharp, and they flip it to the other tail back, and there is not much there. Parrish gets taken down in the backfield. And uh, again, Bo, the defensive end, causing trouble. Yeah, that young man is all over the place, and he's playing a different brand of football right now. You got some boys playing out there, and then you got him out there playing grown man football, and he's making plays end up on the perimeter, in space, wherever he needs to make plays. He's, he's the difference maker on the field right now. Second down and 11. And again, they fake to Sharp going across. And handoff again to uh, Parrish. Is that again Parrish? Yes. And that's the case of they think that they're probably keying on Sharp and they're trying to work it outside and get something else started. And it's not really uh, working to their advantage right now. Number 58 in there, Austin Craig to make a stop. Third and 11. McVeigh. Steps up, throws, got a man at the 45, and is caught first down. Nice job right there, McVeigh doing something that he hadn't done a lot of earlier in the day, throwing the beep, throwing the dart out there and getting his receiver a chance. And South Ardell came out of the pile with the ball, but the referee ref ruled that the receiver was already down. And Johnson, it's a. Uh, only the third reception he's caught tonight. Well, you see McVay stepping up, and this time he th throws a strike outside, and the receiver makes the catch. And they were fortunate enough to hang on to the ball right there in that situation. 6 2 2 5 Nice receiver. And this will be McVay keeping it and running up the middle across the 45 and down to the 40, well, down to the 45. Yeah, the number three was ready for Sharp to have the ball on the outside, and when he didn't, he tried to change his direction, and he something came up, and he's hurt pretty bad on the play. So a timeout now here as we uh, tend to the injured player lying right near midfield on the block S. Just want to remind you that today's game is being brought to you by the Charlotte Motor Speedway. And we want to remind you, of course, look ahead to the 2013 season coming up and uh, start looking, uh, making your plans to purchase tickets uh, for those events online or by calling 1-800-455-FANS. That's 1-800-455-FANS. Nighttime in Raleigh, North Carolina, Wake County in the top of Vaughn Towers here. There's some fans relaxing in the stands here for South Iredell. Kicking up their feet, enjoying yep. the scenery, loving the football. Got to be proud of their team making it to the state championship. The ride down from Statesville, North Carolina all the way to Raleigh to see their team play. Second down and four. Coach Tudorin looking over his playbook. McVeigh flips it to Sharp. Sharp's got the first down inside the 40 and down to about maybe the 38-yard line. Sharp, awesome runner, but he's not the first person in his family to be a good running back. He had a brother named J uh, Cousin J.R. Sharp, who was an also a good player who played at East Chapel Hill and North Carolina Central University. I actually coached him one year at East Chapel Hill when I did coach there. Awesome football player, so a lot of good football in that family. First down and 10 at the 38 of South Iredale. Carborough will send three wideouts to the right. And McVeigh fakes the handoff and will keep it himself. And then he is Guess brought who? back across the line of scrimmage by Bo and uh, also uh, Garrett Barnett. Yeah, Bo is everywhere right now. And he's playing a different brand of football, as I mentioned. He's a game changer right now on that side of the ball. Here you see the run on the inside. The quarterback looks like he has a play, and Bo pushes off his man, steps in the gap, and said, not so fast. I've got you. Six-two, two fifty-five, and uh, making a name for himself here in this game. Coach Miller is 
Gotten rid of the hat here in the second half. McVay rolls out, looks downfield, and this one is inter incomplete. Overthrew his intended receiver. Yeah, a really high pass right there. He did a good job of getting his shoulders around, but its release point was too high, and he overthrew the receiver. And on that play, probably a touch pass would have probably been more appropriate. Brings up a third and 11 for Carborough. Just inside the 40. They need to get to the 27 for a first. McVeigh throws downfield. It is caught at the 10. Trey Sharp. Trey Sharp proving he can do a lot of different things. That time he lines up on the slot in a trips formation. And the quarterback just lets it go running seam routes. And he could have picked the guy to go to. Safety gets over there and makes a, and has a big hit at the end. But Sharp hangs onto the ball, showcasing his athletic ability. Here you see the quarterback peeking. And that's the three receiver streak on uh, the trip side. And if the quarterback reads it right, he's going to have a wide open man every time against that coverage. And he read it right and was able to thread the needle. Michael Fisher got there and laid a lick on Sharp, but Sharp held on. Now moving. A little power to the right. And uh, this is Parrish, not much there. Yeah, that time they tried to go a little unbalanced to the other side and uh, work, it, work it on the right-hand side. And South Iredell wasn't having any of that as their defensive line held the line and showed good gap integrity and not giving up the big play. Well, this is the 11th play of the drive now, starting at the Carborough 34. And they're inside. Get to the yard. Second down and goal at the six. McVeigh keeps it himself. Uh-oh. Avoids one tackler. Swift gets by another one inside the five and gets down to the three. Two, Nifty uh, moves there by the quarterback as uh, there wasn't much blocking out there to help him, and he had to uh, get around some defenders to get where he did. There he, there he was again showing you a little tiny football as he's got really good feet and really quick for his size. Makes one man miss, gets back on his track, and he sees that he's not going to be able to outrun the rest, and he just tries to put the ball down and put his shoulders down and get all the uh, ground he can, gain all the ground he can get. Not really a great way to do it, but hey, he's, make, he's making a positive plays. Big third down, Sharp sees Greener Pasture to the left, and he is in for the touchdown. And that's something you can't coach. Not a lot of people would make that cut, and not a lot of people could believe they can make that cut on the fly. And Sharp showcases his athletic ability, cuts it back, and takes it to the house. And the crowd loves it. There's the young man. Trey Sharp, just a sophomore. And Mike McPeak on to attempt the extra point. This to get it to a four-point lead. His last one was, last attempt was blocked. This one is not. And with five minutes and 27 seconds remaining here in the third, Carborough leads 20 to 16. There you see the replay of the cut he made. He cut it all the way back across the green and took it all the way to the C gap on the outside, which is the outside perimeter. Not a lot of running backs have the ability to make that cut, and not a lot of them have the ability to outrun people when they do. And you saw the little seal block, and he's on his own out there once he makes that cut. He's got to make the rest miss, and he makes it happen. 12 play, 66-yard drive, and Carbro. Regains the lead 20 to 16 in this 2A, 2AA state championship. Number 17, Mike McPeak takes home to the Jaguars. Number 21, Richard. Right now, we've got ourselves a good football game, and both teams are lining up for a fantastic finish. South Iredale, of course, has been consistent moving the ball. Both teams are going to have to buckle a little bit defensively, and the team that finds it on defense right now is going to be the team that walks away 2AA state champion. Peak gets everyone ready and sends this one high and short into the air. This could be trouble. And now it's not. It just bounces harmlessly out of bounds. And so another penalty. And will no likely give South Iredale the ball first and 10 at the 35. Yeah, that way you keep it away from their big returners and give your defense a chance. And that offensive and defensive line battle between these two teams is getting pretty heated. 
and you can see the momentum. But uh, maybe South, oh, South Iredale is asking for a re-kick. They're not going to take it there. It's not a bad move, though. Make them kick it to somebody. You want to see, see your team run. You want to get a chance to make a play. It's a good idea to get your guys involved. Make them kick it to you again. Smith waits back there deep. So McPeak to kick it off again, this time from the 35. High end over end, short. Oh, and he is labeled Woo! at the 40 yard line. Wow. Hey man, hey, I like the nerve of that kid, though. He stood in there and he took it. He could have called a fair catch and took the easy way out. He hung in there and took it, and he's a tough kid. Well, he's the spur backer there on the and, defense, yeah, and he got he got spurred you, <laughs> <laughs> on that occasion. And you're going to be a spur back. When you play one of those positions where they got a special name for you, you know you're a good football player. Like Rover. Rover, right. Spur, Link. It was just something to make you let you know that your position is special. From the 41, Smith. And he gets outside to about the 42, maybe the 43. Yeah, with a big back Mike Smith, I don't know if I like him running sideways. I want him coming downhill. He has the ability to do it, though. It's right here, he gets it, and they're running the little power O. You got the kick out, and the seal didn't happen. And that's why the linebackers were able to get out there because nobody, the double team didn't get off the double team and push forward. And it will be Smith. Oh, upended on that far side for a gain of a yard or two. And that's what the corners have got to be physical. And we see South Iredell's corners step up and be physical against Sharp all day. And there you see some of the uh, uh, Carborough corners step up. And I think it's number nine right here who comes on and makes the big hit. He's smart, though. He went low. He didn't try to take that big man on the top because it would have gotten ugly. Third down and seven. South Iredale had a three and out. King swings it out here, incomplete. And another three and out for South Iredale. Paul Doria is standing down to the sidelines with a very special guest, Paul. Thanks, Greg. Here now with Davis Whitfield, Commissioner of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. And once again, a, a pleasure to have you with us on the telecast. What a terrific night for football here at Carter Finley, and what a phenomenal football game. Great night for football, and I tell you, we've got a big battle going on right here, and we've had many battles uh, today, and this one uh, will not disappoint the fans tonight, it looks like. It started last night with a great one, and it's just continuing on right through the end of the weekend. Uh, you know, I wanted to just talk briefly about the the, the improvements to the website, the uh, the association's outreach via social networking, the, the new mobile apps, the ability for you know fans, students, student athletes to learn more about eligibility and obviously more about their favorite sports through social media. Well, we try to do so many things with our website. We want to make sure that our schools can reach the information that they need to be successful at the school level, but also to make sure that our fans have the information that they need to come out and support our young people like they're doing tonight. And we want to continue to make it better and continue to find ways to broaden our scope and continue to talk about the ways that we're helping young people and, and uh, the wonderful young people that we have competing in our programs. And what's great is that in real time, you can hear that crowd get up and, uh, and people all over the state of North Carolina are tuning in. They're watching it on the stream. They're watching it live on the special events channel. And, uh, and they're able to see highlights, et cetera, through social networking. Uh, Davis Whitfield, I think we've got a, a, a quick second, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you uh, wrap up. Just a final thought on Carter Finley and North Carolina State as, a, as one of the host schools uh, for this fantastic event. Well, great site here at Carter Finley, no question about it. And they have been for a long time. And we've got three great sites, obviously, at North Carolina, at Wake Forest, and, and certainly here. And, and when these young people are able to showcase their talents on we have stages such block. as this and, and in the best Division I college facilities that we have in the state and across the country, uh, it's certainly a thrill for them and a thrill for us. Well, this crowd is uh, almost uh, getting the best of us. We'll send it back to you, Greg. All right. Thank you very much, Paul. And thank you very much, Commissioner Davis Whitfield, uh, for joining us here on the broadcast live on Time Warner Cable Sports.
After a penalty, half the distance to the goal for a block below the waist, charge to Carborough. It's first down and 23 from the 13. It's always good to hear from the commish. And uh, big things happening. And North Carolina has stepped it up, and I think this coverage has been awesome. Having the fans having the choice to be able, and a lot of people having the ability to come, but some people who aren't able to come having the ability to see these games, it's been spectacular. Right. Ooh, if he cuts that back. McVeigh cutting it to the left and running right into a tackler at about the 12, maybe the 13. Yeah, there he had a chance. If he cuts that back to the right when he hits that seam, he's probably still running. He did a good job of pressing the edge, but right about here you'll see he starts that way. He comes up the field. If you look back to the right, there's nobody over there. If he makes that cut, he's out the gate. Third down, 18. They need to get to the 36, and they're at the 18. So a big third down situation here for Carborough, and they're going to hand it off to Sharp, and he's going to get out to about the 20, uh, 23, just give him a little more room to punt. Yeah, play it safe. There's not a, play, a lot of plays in your playbook that's going to get you a first down like that. Unless, of course, you, you know you play for the uh, Baltimore Ravens and your name is Ray Rice. <laughs> That's about the only team I've seen that was able to convert you know, a, a ridiculous number like that. And in most cases, you're not going to get that. So be, be safe, play the field position battle, and let your defense keep you in the game. Carrington standing inside his own 10. And he gets a nice one away. Yeah. Everhart fielding it at the 40. And he's out to the 43, and he's taken down. Yeah, big hits right there. These guys are passing licks, and that one right there was delivered by uh, Sam Blobe, who comes down and makes a big hit. There you see the returner's got a chance. He makes the first man miss, and then the big hit over the top right there by Blobe, finishing it up. Good special teams. And now the fake. King fakes the hand off to Smith, then looks like he's going to run it and decides to flip it out here to Scotty Miller Jr. And Scott Miller Jr. gets out of bounds, but yeah. not before he gets uh, a first down, I believe. That's like a long option play where the quarterback runs towards the sideline and throws it as, pe as they converge, and he's fortunate to get it out there. And Miller Jr. shows you some tough running right there. As he doesn't go down easy and gets the first down. Breaks a couple tackles. Officials making a stop here. Looks like they might want to measure or they something's going on on the sideline. Yep. They will make a timeout for measurement. And, uh, you know, it's just been a beautiful day weather-wise. Uh, but before you head out to work or play, you can check out the Weather on the Ones forecast anytime you want from our team of meteorologists. They'll keep you up to date with the latest forecast every 10 minutes only on News 14 Carolina. I tell you what, we've been having some great weather the last couple of days, and uh, we've had some spectacular sights at nighttime. Have you been able to see the, the moon the last couple of nights? It's not quite entirely full here tonight, but uh, the last couple of nights, it's uh, almost so close you can reach out and Yeah, it looks like it's just it. sitting on the corner. When yep. it first starts, it's like sitting behind the trees, and then it'll come on out. And you're like, wow, this is a beautiful sight. And there's an even better picture by our camera guys. They get us some of the best shots, man. We're very lucky to get some of these shots we get this, that we've been able to get this year. So they call it a first down after the measurement. And with a minute 46 to go here in the third quarter. This third quarter has kind of progressed through, through here nice and quick here. And there's a pass out here to uh, Stockton. Stockton making some moves, and he gets inside the 40 down to about the 37. The official fell down there on the far side. Yeah, I think he tripped over the sticks. Stockton may have gotten hurt. He might have juked himself out of his body because that was a quick move right there on the outside. And he made people miss, and he's showing a little wiggle out there. And he looks like he's got a bad wheel right now, and he's trying to get off the field so he doesn't hurt, so they don't have to stop playing. Just a junior. Had some good plays here in this game. First down and 10 
at the 37. And Smith mm -hmm. well, fakes the handoff to Smith, but there is a whistle down. Flag down. Sides. So four drives. Prior to the snap, we have encroachment against the defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still first down. So it's their first and ten will be first and five. Four drives, three three and outs, one touchdown by Carborough to take this 2016 lead. And now this is the fifth drive. The third for South Iredale. The first two, three and outs. This third one they're hoping will be a nice answer in this third quarter to uh, Carborough's touchdown and the Chaston Smith goes for a first down run. Yeah, the big man got in the hole and when nobody on Carborough was in a hurry to get in there and meet him and he shows, shows you his ability to make a few people miss as he's able to get about 15 yards on the carry. Smith, the defense, and what a play. Looked like number 60 and number 52 got pushed back. Yeah, that was about as awesome of a defensive play as you could possibly find from number 44, James Scott. The linebacker, also uh, the defensive end, Funis. There you see the play. He decides to cut it back, and he gets underneath his pads and just pushes everything back. Yeah, Funis, number 47. Get quickly back to action. King on the keeper, and he dances inside the 15. Down to about the 13-yard line, a pickup of about 11 on the play. Yeah, big play by King as he was able to showcase you and show you some of his ability, and he's got a little bit of wiggle, too. Now they're probably going to go to that power I set if you see him running off to the sideline, yep. and it looks like they may be. Lachastin Smith two for the going into the huddle here. Ball Eight seconds remaining here in this third quarter. Let's see if they get this play off. I'm uh, not sure they, if they do. They no. may let it run out. And they will. That is the end of the third. Well, now a whistle here, a penalty flag. I don't know what the penalty flag's for because the clock ran out. It's the game clock, not the uh, time clock. Play not the play clock. Still has seven seconds left. So let's wait here and see what, what's going to happen here. Let's, what the officials. Well, they'll get it sorted out. All right, here we go. That's the end of the quarter. Well, referee Robert Moore says it's the end of the quarter. We have no foul on the play. The clock ran out before the foul. All right. So there you have it. So we'll take a timeout. And we'll come back with the final quarter of play of this 2AA state championship. It's the 2012 BB&T North Carolina High School State Championships right here on Time Warner Cable Sports. We'll be back. In sports, it's all about the numbers. The Ford Sports Night is on seven nights a week. Seven nights equals more than 200 minutes every single week. That's more than 1,200 hours yearly of non-stop sports with an award-winning sports cast and the only live nightly show about local sports in North Carolina. How you like them numbers? The Ford Sports Night, every night at 10 on News 14 Carolina, only on Time Warner Cable. I am so excited to be here at Charlotte Motor Speedway and Z-Max Dragway. There is truly no place like this in the world and the excitement is everywhere. These are the most amazing racing facilities in America where over 200,000 of the finest fans come together to cheer on the best race car drivers in the world. You're absolutely going to flip when you see this amazing mecca of motorsports. So call 1-800-455-FANS for tickets and grab your cooler, grab your family and your friends and let's go racing. Whether you're on the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast-to-coast -coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. 
Now available on Time Warner Cable's Carolina On Demand, the 2012 NCHSAA Men's Soccer Championships. Scores, saves, and celebrations. Select the NCHSAA tab under the All New section. To the other side of the box, here's another cross, and it's in! Want more high school sports action? How about women's volleyball championship games? These events and much more are now available on Carolina On Demand. Only on Time Warner Cable, the official television partner of the NCHSAA. And we are back for the fourth and final quarter of play here on the Time Warner Cable presentation of the North Carolina High School Football State Championships here. Brought to you by BB&T, Carborough, and Sarth Iredale, and uh, the Jaguars scoring in the third quarter. That was the only score. But it is South Irondale threatening here. 12 minutes to go. 12 minutes on a season for both teams. Ethan Cram inside the 10 down to about the six Number yard line. And it'll be first and goal for the Vikings. I like how they run the little box set out of this power eye too because they give you the option to go either way. And you can kind of see where it's going to go. But it's Perfect awesome full set. And I suspect you'll probably get a little bit of the same. This time they'll go to the right with the bigger back. And this is Smith, the bigger back, and he is in. Touchdown. Yeah, right on cue. And that's something that Carro hasn't really had an answer for today. And one of the things they can probably do defensively is pinch a little bit and try to make it bounce because right now they haven't even shown you anything that's going to take it outside until they show you that you got to take away what you know. Smith, his second touchdown on the night, his 16th of the season. Number 44, Spencer Kingsley to attempt the extra point. And that's a guy who's missed most of the season due to injury as well. Kingsley in to attempt the extra point to give South Iredale a three point extra lead. He floats it up in the air and it is good. Nice response South by South Iredale to the uh, Carbro score and getting on the board. And here you see the play at the end where the running back gets it. You got a kick out, a kick out, a seal. And he just runs through everything else. And 44, he just missed. He thought someone else had the ball or something. But that's something that you can't do right here. He's got a clean shot. But he's trying to fight off, and there's nothing left there. Running back's in the end zone. That was a nine-play, 57-yard drive for South Iredale to take to retake the lead 23-20. Competitive games all day long here at Carter-Finley. We have been entertained here in this 2012 BB&T North Carolina High School Football State Championships. I'm sure you have at home or watching here in the viewing area, live on Time Warner Cable Sports or online worldwide, on the web, uh, anywhere in the United States, news14.com. Or you can go to the North Carolina High School Athletic Association website, nchsaa.org, O-R-G. And the links are there, too, to view these games. Been an excellent day, and this game's going to finish up the same way. Yeah, every game is, looks like it's coming down to the last few possessions, and what a beautiful way to end the season for all, this, all these games. Short kick taken at the 25, the 30, and out to about the 37-yard line. Still hasn't gone down. No, he still hasn't gone down. There's uh, Dolby, I believe, number nine. It is. He Come lost his shoe. Yeah, he lost his shoe. <laughs> He's giving it all up for the team. First half possession now favor of uh, Carbro. 19 minutes to 16. There you see the return, and he gets up inside, and there they take his shoe. He comes like, I don't need that, and he keeps driving for yardage. This guy's <laughs> fighting. He knows there's only. Uh, 10 or 11 minutes left in his season, and he's leaving it all out there on the football field. <laughs> like a pinball yeah. being battered around in there without a shoe. First down and 10, Carbo at their own 40-yard line. Great field position down by three. And we've got movement in the offensive line. This is that shift that they've done a few times before, and this time a defensive lineman comes over, and we'll wait and see what the, uh, the call is going to be here. Is there contact? Yeah, offsides. Prior to the snap, we had encroachment by the defense. 
That's still shift, first down. Uh, that's a tricky it's, shift. It's not an illegal shift because of where Penalty. it comes from. Is it, it's a guard? Or it's not a guard. It's what they're, what they're doing is he's, he's not setting. He doesn't set. So he's not set in a situation. And he has the ability to move because he's not set. See, all the other people have a hand down. He's not set. Now they're going to call an illegal shift on that. And that's just because of the other play. The other Prior before. to the snap, we have a false start against the offense. But he's never, he's, 74. Never, he's never put himself in a stance where he's set. You set up or you set down, and he never set so himself. So he has the ability line. to move to the other side, and it's not an illegal shift. Now from here, it looks like it's a tackle. That's it is a tackle that's moving, but he has, the ability, he has the ability to do that because he's on the end of the line. Now he's set in a stance. Fake the hand off to Sharp. McVay is going to air it out. Got a man out there, but he leads him a little too far. And need to give him just a little bit more air. Pass incomplete. Yardage at the end of uh, the third quarter in favor of Carborough, 268 to 196. They have uh, 117 on the ground, 151 in the air. Meanwhile, South Iredale, 143 on the ground, 43 in the air. First downs are even, 12 apiece. Turnovers, uh, just the two interceptions for uh, Carborough, one for South Iredale. And it's a re relatively even, although uh, South Iredale is three for 10 on third down. Carborough is five for nine, a little bit better percentage there. Second down and 10 from the 40. And they flip it out here to Sharp. Sharp at the 40 and defended well. Yeah, good job of stretching that play out by South Iredale. That play didn't have a chance once he got out side the trip receivers Number because 20, 20, there was going to be too many people out there. He has This has to cut up inside a little bit quicker, right about here, if he's going to have an opportunity to make a play. And because they bounced him wide, there was nowhere for him to go. And uh, luckily for him, he was able to get that much yardage because most people would, would have lost yardage on the play. Scotty Miller Jr. in there along with uh, Briggs Lunsford, number 15, third and nine for the Jaguars. They need to get to midfield. McVay. Trying to move around there and look for someone open downfield. Incomplete. Trying to find uh, Johnson over the middle at about the 46, and he cannot connect. Yeah, that might have been a play where it would have been better for him to just take off up the right-hand side after he squared up in the middle because he's fast. Here you see him moving left. He didn't like what he sees because of Bo. I understand that. But when he's coming back right, there's really nobody there who can outrun him or run with him. He could have gotten plenty of yardage, and he's very fortunate that wasn't picked off and taken back to the house. Barnett, along with Briggs Lunsford, collided there over the secondary, and I think Lunsford is the one that's uh, walking off uh, gingerly, or is it Barnett, number 41? It is Barnett. They had collided, the linebacker and uh, Lunsford, the other linebacker, on the coverage there. Number seven, Everhart, deep for the Vikings. The South Iredell defense has been impressive tonight, though. They're, they're all over the field. They're swarming. They're making plays. And they're limiting that powerful Carver offense to very few yards when they get a chance. Now Malik Carrington fields a, a low punt. That's a, he does get away beautifully. It sails out of bounds. And so a three and out for Carver and South Iredell will get the ball back at a three-point lead here now with just over 11 minutes on the season. Yeah, 11 minutes and two seconds left. And now it's going to come down to who wants it the most in the ball game this close. And whichever team put, is able to uh, put, a, put a score on the board next is going to put pressure on the other team to answer. First down and 10 from the 27. Fake the handoff to Smith. And is this Cram? Now it's number 17, Scott Miller, Jr. Yeah, Miller, Jr. runs tough. He's one of those kids. He doesn't like to go down. He, he must have something against the ground. He refuses to go down, and I like that effort from this young man. As he gets inside, it looks like he's going to go down. He gets, uh, jumps around people, gets pinballed a little bit, and is able to get positive yardage when he gets the football. Picked up five, second down and five. Here's Smith. Smith trying to make a move, gets out to the 36-yard line. You'll be sure I have a first down by about a yard or two. Yeah, nice Good job of him of being three, decisive three, at the point of attack. He, what he's got to do then is get downhill once he third, gets outside and not worry and about trying to sidestep team. everybody. You start mauling people 36. over when you're that size. Changes now. 
as Bo, the big defensive end, comes in. Along with Bustle, number three. So we have four or five guys coming in now. Yeah, this is like it might be that big power I set, but I don't think they're going to get it off in time. And they might have to call a timeout here. Now they get it off in time. And Smith gets up across the 38-yard line, good enough for a first down. Yeah, good job of South Ardell to have it play Glock awareness. And right now they're trying to march this one down the field. So they know this possession is big, and it's big for both teams. If Carborough doesn't get a stop right here, it's going to be really hard to come back and win this ball game. So first down and 10 from the 38, nine and a half minutes. King will keep it himself. Makes a nice move and gets out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. A short gain. Number 12, King on the carry. Yeah, it looks like the coach wanted him to pitch that one, and he wasn't ready for it. And I thought he made a pretty good Gain decision right here as he's coming out. He has the opportunity to pitch it early, and he Second doesn't. Once he makes up his mind, he's not going to pitch it. He's got to do a better job of getting up the field and down the field and not running side to side. Second down and eight. King looks to throw. Now starts to run, dumps it off, trying to find Miller, and it's incomplete. It's incomplete. And it will be a third down third situation. Down yeah, once again, a little indecision right there as he wanted to go downfield. The Carver did a good job of covering down the field. So he decides to come to a check down. And when he comes to a check down, there's nothing there. But what I do like is he threw it where nobody could catch it and, and eliminated the intentional grounding. Third down and eight. King has time, steps up, throws. Like he might have hit the ground. And I think official from the far side comes over and says it is a catch to Fisher. But it will be short of a first down, I think, depending like on the spot. Okay. I know I thought I saw the other guy come in and say it hit the ground, but they, Fisher good job of King stepping up and Fourth getting it out there. One. And yeah, he did snag it off. He snug it before he hit the ground. Looked like a pretty good throw. Here we see it in slow motion. And he goes down and he cradles. Ooh, close call. I, mean, I can't tell if the ball moved or not. But a good job of ruling it in by the wide receiver. So fourth down in the yard. The Vikings leading by three are going to go for it. I don't know if they're going to try to draw them off sides or not, but I don't know if this is a good idea in this situation because if you give up field position right here, it could be big. Smith, and he's got the first down to midfield. Uh, sometimes you got to gamble, I guess, and that time they gambled and it paid off. Well, Coach Miller doesn't want that defense back on the field. He wants his offense to be in control, hold on to the football, play South Irondale football, and right there, I'm sure is uh, what he was talking about. Smith gets the first down. Yeah, good job by Smith of being patient. He could have ran right into that pile and got nothing, but it, he waited for it to develop a little bit, and he cut it back and was able to get a nice yardage on the play. Smith takes it here and running off that right side, not very quickly here, here, and he's brought down right away. Looks like he's going to lose a yard on the play. Yeah, most of his positive yardage has come from running left today. And that time Lost they went the to yard. they tested Second the right side and he wasn't able to get much on the play. 49. So again, he lines up in the backfield there with King. King gets a snap from center and will drop back to pass. Now King fakes the pass and now will put it down and run the football. Ooh. He's at the 45 and dances out of bounds at the 42. Number he will be shy of a first down by about two and yards. King. Yeah, nice down, job right here. When the first wave line. misses and he steps underneath, he does a good job of getting upfield right here. I wasn't sure if this was a block in the back or not. And it looks like it could have been, or but a good no Third call because it didn't affect three. the play. And there you see the quarterback moving on down the field and making a positive play. And the corner comes up and, and catches him low and keeps him from getting the first down. Smith at the 40. And he breaks free at the 35. Smith still on his feet. Look at the power running from LeChaston Smith. Like they might have stripped that out of there. Inside the 25 to the 24. Yeah, Carborough was trying to strip the ball instead of tackling the man, and I thought they might have got it in the end, but uh, you couldn't really tell. But you got to tackle that big man and not let him punish you like that, and this is one of the reasons why I say give it to him. Here you got one tackle, two tackles, three tackles. 
a five dollar cab ride four tackles five tackles six and now they're swatting at the ball and right there i thought they got it out before he came down and it looked like carbro might have gotten it back but nonetheless it is a run up the middle and there is nothing there for ethan cram number 32. number 32 cram on the carry now south iredale had an eight play Tackle 67 or 57 yard board. drive for a score Most to take a three point lead. And, and now they are on the 12th play of this drive. 25 yard line of the Jaguars. So they are definitely turning the time of possession and number of plays over into their favor here in this fourth quarter. First down and or second down and 11. And King is brought down in the backfield. Yeah, big time sack. South, I mean, uh, Carborough shows Number you their ability to get to the quarterback Kirby without a blitz. And that's one of the things that's been their staple all year, but they haven't really been able to get to King a lot today as he's very elusive and able to get positive yards. Well, this time they're able to corral him in the backfield and get the sack. Damian Curry, number 52, in there to make the stop for Carborough. Third down and 15. Cram at the 25, and he is brought down inside the 25 to about number the 24-yard line. He picks up about Tripped up by number 74. six. Parrotton. And it will be fourth down and 10. Yeah, fourth they're probably in the go zone right now because they probably, I don't think they can kick a field goal from that far, looking at how he's kicked extra points. So they knowing this is four down territory, they figured they'd get a little chunk of it right here, and they did. And now they're going to go for it to try to get the first down. Fourth down. They need to get to the nine. King has plenty of time. Now that time is elapsed. King breaks one tackle, gets down to the 20. So he picks up about four, but he's still six yards shy of a first down. Number 12, I think King thought the that they only needed to get to the 24-yard uh, line. I don't think he realized they needed to get to about the 14-yard line for the first down. He thought it was a first down. First and 10 for the Jaguars. Coach just let him know you got to throw the ball. Line. It's fourth down. You can, you're not going to get it on the ground. Here he's rolling out a little bit indecisive. He makes a move inside, but he had a lot of ground to gain, and he still needed six more yards before he was going to get anywhere close to the first down. So the a 13-play drive stalls at the 20. It's first down and 10 for Carborough coming back the other way with five minutes and 15 seconds to go. Pump fake, McVay throws it out there. Got a man wide open, Ooh. incomplete. Wheel route, and he hit him in stride, and good defense right there by South Iredale, a breaking of the play in time. The crowd's wanting the pass interference call. Looked like a pretty good defensive play in live action. The quarterback pump fakes on the wheel route. He lets it go, and here you see the action, and I don't know, that's about even timing right there. I think that's pretty good defense on the play. Fisher's been excellent all evening long, all game long, second down and 10. That time timed it out just right, second down and 10 from the 20. McVeigh. Now he's going to run it. He's got a lot of daylight. 30, 35, 40, 45, out of bounds at midfield. And I think that's been there for him most of the day. And you can see his speed Number and electricity. Three. He's one of those guys that has, a, has really good feet. And he's quicker than he looks. And he takes off. And when he hits that gap, he's gone. He made up his mind he was running. Nobody going to catch him from, from behind. You're going to have to catch him from in front. And if you take a bad angle, he'll run away from you. First down and 10, Carborough. 5.01 remaining in regulation. They are 49 yards away from retaking the lead. Low snap, picks it up, sends it out here to Sharp. One-handed catch, sidesteps one, 45. Sharp at the 40, and Sharp still uh -oh. on his feet at the 35. Uh -oh. He breaks it open at the 30. Uh -oh. Sharp still on his feet. <laughs> and he's finally down at the 28-yard line. Oh, man, I love it. This guy is showing some heart. The quarterback let him know it was a swing route. Hey, check. I'm checking. For, I'm coming right to you. He let him know in the huddle, and he told everybody right there he was going to do it. And then he went to him, and Sharp shows you some athletic ability. He hasn't been able to get an open field much today, but here you see the ability, making people miss. He almost stepped out, but he didn't. 
Spin move on the sideline, breaking tackles. And right here, he gives him a little $5 cab ride. Hey, how'd you like to go on this trip? And he finally pulled down, but not before he makes a big play. Fisher finally brings him down at the 29-yard line. Sharp showing his running ability and then somebody grabbed his shoe and I held on for dear shot. life. That <laughs> That's was, what you got to do when you got a guy as elusive as him. You got to just grab something and hold on till you get help. Scotty Miller Jr. About four on the, play. On the tackle down after down a pickup of four. Six. Six. Jack Second down and six now with four minutes remaining in this contest. Two double A state championship on the line. Uh, Carborough's making a move right now, and South Iredell needs to dig in if they're going to have a chance to win this ball game. And, you know, that Carborough offensive line looks like it might be wearing his defensive line down a little bit as they're able to run the ball now better than they've been in the past. McVay hands it off, coming this near side. This is Parrish. Uh -oh. Parrish at the uh -oh. 20, 15. Looks like his momentum might have been stopped, but they barely got that jet sweep off in time, if they got it off in time. And that's a first down run on the carry by Parrish. And Parrish getting up a little slowly as he was hit hard. Let's take another look. There you see the cut back on the jet sweep. He gets in the seam, gets behind the blockers, and he's just cut, adding yardage to the run. And right there, he got bent up pretty bad, and they can see he rolled his hip pretty bad. At the end of the play, he's probably hurt a little bit the way he went down, but I like the effort. This kid is leaving it out there, and you can see him get folded back with his legs up under him right here, and that never feels good as he goes back, and he was down before that ball came out. First down and 10 from the 12. Handoff sharp, and nothing there. Yeah, right away they got that sniffed out. Of he's not going to be the person that gets inside on them. They're, they're not going to give up that run. He's going to have to make somebody miss and be effective on that play. No and on play. right now, they got about two or three people going everywhere he goes just to make sure that he's not the one that hurts him. And now for Carborough, you're not only trying to get the ball down the field and score, but you're also trying to manage a little bit of the clock as well. Yeah, right now, it's not a bad idea to run out a little bit of time. And if they're able to score a touchdown, it could possibly be over. And right here, I think you'll probably see some misdirection with the quarterback. McVay. Looks to keep it himself, finds trouble. Now is on the loose. Gets a nice block from Sharp. McVay at the 10, at the five. Touchdown! Yeah, that's a case of a touchdown, but it might have been a better idea if he didn't score right away because they could have run some more time off the clock. But if you're the coach, you want to take that touchdown as quick as you can possibly get it. 12-yard touchdown run. Big time run touchdown. by the quarterback, and I said some misdirection, but I was really shocked that it went out, they came out that way, and right now they're up by three, and an extra point puts them up by four, which makes Number South Iredell have to score a touchdown. So this extra point is going to loom big for uh, Carborough. McPeak into attempt, the extra point. It's up, it's in the air, and it is good. And Carborough with two and a half minutes left. Lead by four, 27-23. Yeah, that, that whole drive was keyed by a bunch of big-time runs by players and topped off by the quarterback who started it with the first big run on the drive. And he, you see he has nowhere to go. He turns the corner, big-time block by Sharp coming back. Receivers blocking downfield, and the quarterback just giving it up and laying it out and putting it in the end zone. Another look here, and there he is coming right at you into your living room. He's able to get in the official there and the excitement by the senior quarterback. What a senior season it has been for Alex McVay. Over 2,000 yards passing, 24 touchdowns passing. He also has, coming in, 390 yards rushing and three TDs. He's picked up quite a bit more here tonight, including two touchdowns on the ground. And with 2.37 remaining, Carborough 27, South Iredell 23. And the Vikings will have one last shot at a drive here. They need a touchdown. They cannot do it for the field. Big peak. No doubt will try to keep it away from any kind of a return here. Kick over here to the short side of the field, and it uh, might be 
number seven, no, number three, John Bussell. And he is uh, brought down. So it is first down and 10 for South Iredale. And they will have first it at the 38. For the Vikings on their own 38 yard This line. drive is looming big right now as it's going to come down to this. And we've had a lot of this all day where it's come down to the last drive. And right now, South Iredale is going to have to find a way to get this ball in the end zone. That means they're going to have to open it up a little bit for the passing game and hope that something comes through or they can come through and get it done. King on the option will keep it 40-45 midfield, 45-40, 35-30, and he is out of bounds. Oh, or maybe not. Just let your quarterback drop back and take off Number like the other team did and get a big play, and that's exactly what they did. Here you see King rolling it, rolling it. He doesn't like what he sees. Finally, he tucks it away and showcases his ability, and with those long legs and he turns when he turns the corner, if it's not for speedy secondary, he's easily in the end zone. So a whistle here, and it looks like maybe the timeout. Both teams have three timeouts each in the final two minutes and 24 seconds. And we have a timeout for the defense. That's the first charge timeout. Carborough of the will call the timeout. And this will allow us to remind everybody to like Carolina on a man on Facebook and also to follow us on Twitter. Hashtag TWC Sports NC to us here this evening, and, uh, and we'll get those tweets from you. From the Game of the Week announcements to behind-the-scenes photos and videos of our high school sports productions, Carolina On Demand has you covered. And Joe's uh, been tweeting with some people here tonight all day long. Yeah. He's found some people out there who have been watching us here live on Time Warner Cable Sports and also on the web on uh, News 14. Com. Got a lot of people out there checking us out today, and it's been fun chatting with a lot of them. A lot of Twitter people wanting to know uh, about venue and why some of these venues were chosen. And it's simple. It's to give the kids an opportunity to play on the big-time stage. And you see the fans showing up for it, and it's awesome to see this and how everything works out for them. First down, King swings it out here in the left uh, flat, and there's no one there. Yeah, he had to hurry to throw. They had the wheel route working. And if he was able to get a little bit of time, it looked like the, the DB may complete. have bitten on the wheel route, Second on the out route, ten. and the wheel route was going to be open, but unfortunately the pressure made him throw the ball before he was ready. Well, back up in New York State where I'm from, you have sectional championships. Those are played uh, where the home of the Buffalo Bills, so you're playing on a, a professional, you know, 70, 80,000 seat stadium. And then uh, the state championships are held in Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. So that's a pretty big field, and there's a pretty big stage. And boy, number 14, Michael Fisher, has responded here tonight on the big stage, and he comes up with a big pass reception inside the 25 number down 14, to about the 21 yard line. Yeah, big play, Mike making a play right there, and the quarterback hangs in there. King looks and surveys the field on the crossing route, and this has been open almost all night as he's able to run away from the DB on the crossing route, and that's something that you might see him come back to again before this drive is up. Fisher, two interceptions tonight. Makes a big catch there. King will keep it himself. King at the 20. And King gets towards that first, uh, the uh, down marker. And tries to get out of bounds. He does not. Number 12, clock King on the is carry. running with a minute 45. Yeah, right now the clock is Second their enemy. But the they're also on the, on the positive side of the field where they can make plays towards the end zone. So Carbro has to be careful and make sure that you know, they can, if they do get, a, if they don't get a stop, that there's plenty of time left for them to do something. King in trouble. Now fires it out here, all alone at the ten, the five. Well, he didn't and get out of bounds at the one is Scotty Miller Jr. Oh my, he was left alone at the ten yard line, and he got that pass reception from King. Great footwork by King, keep the drive alive, and uh, Miller uh, was there and waiting. King showcasing some escapability right here as he's like he's dead to rights and he gets away from four Carborough defenders and steps up and of course it would be Miller Jr. out there who makes the play and is knocked out before he can get in the end zone. You can see the foot mark where he actually went out. Good job by the referee of being in the proper position as it looks like they're going to come out and probably get in that power eye set and it looks like it may be going left this time. It will be Smith diving up and he runs into a wall at the goal line and he did not get in. Yeah, that may Number be a bad thing, too, right here if, if they don't get a stop because that just means they're able to run more time off the clock, and Carborough needs that time if they're going to have a chance to win this ballgame. 
Actually, I'm shocked they're not calling their timeouts right now in this situation. Carborough up by four. Yep, Smith did not get in. So That's now a good job of 57. Inside, though. 57 seconds. Smith again hits a wall. Second effort. Does he get in? No, the officials are saying no, he did not get in. Number 21. And Carborough defense is trying to hold for one last stand. And right now, time is not on anyone's side. And uh, South Iredale has to try to get it in on this play. Third and goal. And Carborough, if they're going to let this clock run, needs to make sure that they're going to make a stop. Third and now the coach, goal, Miller, ball way ball out ball here at the 10-yard line, finally gets the, to the uh, timeout call. We have our offensive timeout. First charge timeout of the half. And so South Iredale will come over to the sidelines with 23 seconds remaining in this contest. This is coming down to an exciting finish. Literally inches away from the end zone, you've got a big running back who's trying to get in, and you've got Carborough players who are stopping, and it looks like he didn't get in on that play. The ball did fall short of the end zone. Here you see him again as he's push, punch, trying to punch his way through. He's not able to get through, and he comes down, and ro he rolls in eventually, but he wasn't in on the initial play. To be the eighth play of the drive. Carborough getting in a little bit of a breather. Third down and goal from the one. You think it's probably going to be number 21 that's going to get the ball here for South Iredale, but you don't know. Yeah, I think 32 has shown enough success that he may be able to get it going left, and it'll be interesting to see how they do it right here. Carver leading by four. 23 seconds to go. Ball is snapped. Smith again. Oh, hits big the hit. center. His second effort, though, gets him in. Yeah, big hit, but a nice job by the running back of extending. Now Carborough has 19 seconds to try to make a play as South Dowdell punches it in from the one yard line. Well, Chaston Smith, his third of the game. And now the all important extra point by Kingsley to get it to within, to get it, or extend it to three. Spencer Kingsley Out of the hold to attempt the of Miller. After. High snap, put down, Extra kicks up in the air, and it is good. So right now, Carvo needs at least a field goal to send it in overtime or a touchdown to win this thing. Here you see the end zone, the last run, and a big hit off the corner but there wasn't enough pressure on the other side to keep him out of the end zone. Well, another long drive that culminates in a one-yard touchdown run by Smith, his third touchdown of the game. Carborough answers, or rather Carborough scores, South Iredale answers. Nineteen seconds remaining. The Vikings looking to bring home a state championship for the first time. Meanwhile, the Jaguars would like to do the same thing. And there are the Jaguar fans. <laughs> They're loving it right now. Having fun and leading by three. Kingsley will tee it up at the 40. Interesting set Carborough's in right there as they've got all their returners up close. You gotta remember it is a free kick, a live ball. Now they're gonna separate. Now they kind of open the formation a little bit. They know it's gonna be a short kick of some nature. Kingsley will bounce this one along the ground. Sharp picks it up at the 25. Oh, Sharp man. at the 30, the 35, 40, and he's brought down at about the 43-yard line. Yeah, yeah, I thought he had a little crease right there and was going to be able to exploit it, but it didn't work out that way. Now they've got 13 seconds and Kick a couple of timeouts to try to make a play. Yard line. First the Jaguars this is why I thought they would call timeout a little earlier in the clock, just in case, even if they got the stop, 
they would have uh, time to make a change or time to make a difference. And it didn't work out for them. And now, you know, they've got a limited clock. And two timeouts. Three wide outs to that far side. Two to this near side. McVay all alone. Pressured. Steps up in the pocket. Now he throws it all the way downfield. It is intercepted. Yep. Picked up. Intercepted down there towards the uh, around the eight yard line. Yeah, it looks like Mabay may have crossed the line of scrimmage before he threw the football. Down. Yeah, he didn't. There's the flag. I was wondering about that. It looked like he released it at about the 44 yard line, which would be two yards shy. Was it Fisher again with that interception? I think it was. First down. All right, well, the penalty is declined. An illegal forward pass, declined, first penalty down. Penalty is declined. And so South Iredale, an interception helped him score 10 points here today. They intercepted McVeigh. I think this, is, this would have been the third time. Let's take another look at it. Heaves it downfield. And over the shoulder, yes, it is Michael Fisher. His third of the game. And that was an amazing one right there. And the Vikings from South Iredale will put a knee down here with Davin King. Their senior quarterback, number 12. Gets a snap from a freshman, Alex Gurley, the center, and it is all over and that's the ball game. here at Carter Finley. The crushed hearts of the Carborough Jaguars losing here today, and the excitement of the South Iredale Vikings as they win here tonight, celebrate the final 30. To 27. Coach Miller, a class act, and uh, trying to get his uh, team over there. He says, Keep your helmets on, boys. Let's get back over here, celebrate together as a team and a group, and uh, say our congratulations to the team across the field. The final. There are your two AA. North Carolina High School Football State Champions, the Vikings from South Iredale. Congratulations to Scott Miller and his team, his staff. They win here today the final 30 to 27. Boy, what an outstanding contest we have seen all day today. And this one was uh, much more the same. Yeah, a lot of good games and a lot of good football. We, we, we basically got the better of the draw of all the things that went down today as we were able to see three fantastic football games yep. and three teams that really laid it out there. And we saw some small schools step up and play big time football, and that's what it's all about. And this is, well, like I said, this is my favorite part of the game right here. Yep. As you know, you sometimes you swallow your pride and you let it go, and you can grab those guys across from you. And it's a great feeling right now for everybody who's been a part of this. It makes it feel like all the work is worthwhile. And for South Iredale, it's a long time coming. They've been at this for a while. Carborough, a relatively young school. And like I said, not everybody gets to embellish in this moment. And as their athletic director, uh, April Ross pointed out, you know, they've had some success in other sports. And the football in, in Orange County to step up the way it stepped up. And for Carborough to be a part of the process, it says a lot about what they've done with their little league programs and getting things back on track. And I think it's just a matter of time before you start to see the growth and it gets to be a little bit better in that area as well. Well, what an outstanding game this was. A lot of excitement on the football field. Coming up, we'll have the post-game award ceremony, the announcement of the MOPs, defensive and offensive, and the state championship MVP. That's all coming up, and we'll also have a chance to talk with head coach Scott Miller. Much more coming up on the post-game show right after this from Time Warner Cable Sports.
Our young women and men participate in 23 sports in almost 400 high schools across 100 counties throughout the school year. The North Carolina High School Athletic Association provides the framework and oversees and governs the eligibility of all student athletes. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are. We are the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. Time Warner Cable is helping more people connect and enjoy the internet. With an emphasis on educational and employment opportunities, Time Warner Cable is partnering with community-based nonprofit organizations to provide broadband connectivity, ensuring all people can forget buffering and enjoy the benefits of fast internet. The internet shapes the way we work, live, learn, and socialize. That's why a connected nation is a priority at Time Warner Cable. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. Whether you're on the market for a new car, whether you search by vehicle, make, type, or price, the fastest way to access 25,000 cars, trucks, and classics all in one place is HendrickCars.com. New and pre-owned vehicles available coast-to-coast -coast with door-to-door -door delivery and quick and easy financing, complete with actual vehicle photos and free car packs reports. No one makes buying a car easier than HendrickCars.com. Proud supporter of high school athletics across North Carolina. HendrickCars.com, the fastest way to find the car you've dreamed of. The 2AA State Championship post-game celebration. The Vikings from South Iredale are your 2AA State Champions. They win today by the final of 30 to 27. Uh, it was at uh, South Iredale. And Coach uh, Scotty Miller said, you know, winning wasn't a tradition. Well, we tried to change that over the last three years, and they certainly have uh, this season. A winning here today for the 2AA State Championship. We're still moments away from the uh, presentation of the hardware, and there it is, the state championship trophy here the for the 2A, or 2AA State Championships. And uh, coming up, we'll have that presentation, and also we'll have the announcement of the MOP and uh, MVP awards, and uh, we'll have that here to you very, very shortly. And then also we'll uh, have a chance to chat with uh, Coach Scott Miller of uh, South Iredale on their big win. What a season it was for South Iredale. Uh, now let's go down to the field to the PA announcer for the awards presentation. The state runner up black. And now, introducing the 2012 North Carolina High School Athletic Association State Champions, the South Ardale Vikings. We would now ask the captains of the state champions to join their head coach to receive their championship plaque and their championship banner from BB&T. Members of the state champions will also be receiving knit caps courtesy of BB&T and t-shirts from Under Armour. Ladies and gentlemen, we are also pleased to honor several outstanding individual performances in this championship game. The award sponsored by the Carolina Panthers. For the state runners up, the outstanding defensive player in this championship 
as selected by media representatives covering this game is number five, Roe Malott from Carborough. The Outstanding Offensive Player Award, number two, Alex McVeigh. For the state champion, South Ardell, the Outstanding Defensive Player Award goes to number 14, Michael Fisher. The Outstanding Offensive Player Award goes to number 12, David King. And the game's Most Valuable Player Award goes to number 21, LaTaston Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association, we thank you very much for your attendance at the state championship football game. And we ask that you please drive carefully as you return home. On behalf of AAA, we remind you of their safety campaign. You drive, you text, you die. We do want you to return for other state championship events. Thank you. Coach Scott Miller, some final words to his team as uh, they win the state championship here tonight. Hi, everybody. Greg Mayer along with Joe Simmons back up here in Vaughn Towers. The press facilities at Carter Finley. What a great day it's been. All three games, fantastic games. We invite you to watch them all on Carolina On Demand. And, uh, Joe, a special day for us being here for these state championships. And I know a special season for both teams, as the both teams are champions. But as far as a winner today, a state champion, South Irondale, and a special season for them. Awesome job by all the teams that participated today. And South Irondale capped it off, and they earned it. They went out and got it. It wasn't handed to them. They had to come back on the last drive and figure out how they were going to win the football game, and they did it. And every single one of our games came out to the big plays. Paul Doherty is uh, standing by now with the victorious head coach. Let's send it down to Paul for some words from Coach Scott Miller. Coach Miller, either team would be state champs for their very first time. What a football game tonight. I tell you what, our kids played hard. We never quit. Last week we were down 14-0 and 14-7 and 21-7. You do it every day in practice. I make us run 30 plays in 10 minutes at the beginning of practice and anywhere from 30 to 40 the last 10, 15 minutes of practice. So it paid off that last drive. I knew when we got the ball back, we had plenty of time since we had three timeouts. With two and a half minutes left and three timeouts to us, that's like an eight-minute quarter. And I'm so proud of those young men and my coaches for not quitting. At no time did we believe we were going to lose. We just kept fighting hard. You have to visualize you're going to win. I tell people all the time, all week, people keep saying, if you win, if you win. I said, look, nobody in life prepares to win or prepares to if. All right, let's go practice to if. You prepare to win and practice to win. There's no if. If's not in our vocabulary. Well, Coach, you know, Carborough left it all out on the field. McVeigh took his team on his back, gets down into the end zone. And a lot, of, a lot of people watching this game might have thought it was over, and then you were able to put it in the hands of your, uh, and your MVP, Smith, and he took it home for you. Yeah, I tell you, that's a great team. Coach Tudron over there is, is the classiest guy I've ever met as a coach. And, you know, I, I hate it that they, you know, it, they played hard. It was just one of those games somebody unfortunately has to lose, and, you know, I'm proud of our guys, and they played hard. 
And Coach, uh, this was uh, billed by some of the sports media as the battle of the beard. So what's it going to be? State champs, uh, is that beard staying or going? No, I got my clippers in my bag. It'll be all before I come out of that locker room tonight. I hate it. I guess that's going to be it for the beard. Congratulations, Coach Miller. State champions tonight. Back to you, Greg. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Paul. And the congratulations goes so out to head coach Scott Miller for winning here tonight. What a fantastic season, as we said before, and some, some final highlights here, Joe, as we wrap things up. Yeah, right away you see the impact that the running game had on both games, but it also came down to both quarterbacks being able to run the ball as well. And no surprise, you know, the big running back was able to be durable down the stretch. And as I mentioned earlier in the game, I would have been feeding him early and often. But make no mistake, Carborough was a legitimate contender, and they were just seconds away from being state champions. So they've got something to build on. They've got a lot of young guys and a lot of young talent, and I suspect we'll hear a lot more from them in the near future. And from number 20, Trey Sharp, just a sophomore, and two talented tailbacks we saw two very good quarterbacks, some wide receivers, and some great defenses here in this 2AA state championship. Somebody had to win, and tonight it was South Iredale. So congratulations goes out to the Vikings, head coach Scott Miller, and their entire community out there to bring home a state championship. So, Joe, once again, it was a fantastic day. We invite everyone to watch all eight state championship games on Carolina On Demand, channels 199, and 1047 anytime you want it's so easy to watch on carolina on demand and joe it's been a pleasure working with you been great greg thanks all right for joe simmons i'm greg Bayer, and our entire crew here at carter finley stadium we thank you for watching the 2012 bbnt north carolina high school athletic association football championships on time warner cable sports your home for high school sports <laughs>